You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. <clears throat> hello, 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 Internet. Hello, Internet. And welcome to an... I don't even know what accent that was. That's the one, though. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Internet. Stick with that. You know, you're like um, you're like New Zealand. I'm nar- it's like a New Zealand accent. I'm Narciss Prince from uh, Super Punch-Out. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Not me face. Me boat race. <laughs> Not uh, my frog pussy. Getting no. it out of the way, like right in the perfect, yeah, beginning. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. There we go. People were worried. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We're gonna work frog pussy into every episode. We might even do it two minutes into the fucking opening. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Tad Pog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and it might, might also be Tad Tad I Pog because <laughs> yeah. it's Tyler and Dave and Ian play old games. Talk about some weird fucked up shit in. Games, some creepy pasta. Pretty, pretty much. You want to do a creepy pasta episode? That would take a lot of research, <laughs> but it could say, be a lot of fun. You're right. I and mean, we we could have done a kind of a creepy pasta over over what we're talking about today, which is our tinfoil conspiracy theory uh, episode over Mean Girls DS. Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty. I don't know, man. It's wild that we're doing because we. It's it's just we didn't know that like it's a lot of there have been a lot of breakthroughs recently in the lost media yeah. of Mean mm-hmm. Girls within the last like couple of months and it's like we had no idea nope when we were like joking about doing Mean Girls because we had played Little Nicky uh, for the GBA and I was like what other movie tie-ins are there and I think you brought up Mean Girls mm-hmm. and it's like fuck yeah let's do it and then it like turns out that uh, that game didn't exist. Uh, or sort did of, it? Sort of. Well, yeah, it sort of did. Stay tuned. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> we got the frog pussy out of the way. It's just game talk from yeah, here on out. Yeah, now just Lindsay Lohan <laughs> pussy from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess bear striking resemblances? I don't know. I will say, <laughs> and I do want to talk about the movie too, for sure, because yeah. I rewatched that last night. I want to say, like, I have a working theory about Lindsay Lohan, and that is that she actually turned into the plastic that she turned into and her character turned into in Mean Girls because when she starts like doing the makeup and stuff to like fit to like outdo uh what's her name uh Rachel McAdams Rachel Carol. McAdams yeah. character yeah she looks like Lindsay Lohan did in real life like when all that like uh controversy and shit was going on yep, you yeah. know where it's just like I don't know man take a sharpie and draw it around my eyes that's yeah, how I want to look she, yeah she <laughs> It's like, I like this Gara of the Sand look. <laughs> yeah, for real. She did, yeah, definitely have a Gara of the Sand look going on. Well, before we uh, dive into that, what's been up, guys? Can, Can we, we do a fan theory that Gara of the Sand is actually Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan? Lohan? Can yeah. we put together like a video for that? <laughs> I'd love to see yeah, Lindsay Lohan done up as uh, Gara of the Sand versus... There's another. Um, I want the famous. Both the Olsen twins as Rock Lee. <laughs> Rock Lee. <laughs> no, they're the weights. <laughs> they're the weights and the uh, the Elizabeth Olsen right. drops both the Olsen <laughs> twins. Thanks. I was struggling to remember her name. I was like, you know, the Marvel one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the the one who's substantially less rich but better in every way. <laughs> Is she less rich? Oh yeah, like the Olsen twins are. I I remember Melissa looked it up. Their net worth is it's. Unbelievable. Well, there's two of them, so it's not fair. Well, individually, yeah. I mean, because they that all the a, what did they, they did like 32 <laughs> movies that were all like really big that's hits a for lot. kids. That's a lot. Like and they had their, like a they, clothing like line. a fashion yeah. Yeah. line. Yeah, I'm wanting to say that was. I think there are some video games featuring the Olsen twins too. If we mm-hmm. wanted to get into that, Full House and stuff. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I wish it was a Full House like Sims mod or yeah. something. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I thought they were billionaires. Turns out uh, their net worth is two thousand dollars, a thousand each. Yeah, not, right. Not yeah, you got to divide collectively it. Collectively, two thousand dollars. <laughs> Which, hey, man, it's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. It's pretty good. Oh, 
Each Olsen twin is worth $250 million. It's a lot of money. It's a lot, it's a lot of, of money. money. It's a lot of money. That's like com- with their powers combined. That's like half a billion dollars, mm-hmm. right? Is that how money is that how math works? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's see about Elizabeth Olsen with that um eleven million for Elizabeth Olsen. That's the Marvel money. She got a later start. So yep. Yep. yeah. And She'll- she was doing like, you know, legitimate stuff and Olsen twins were and I mean I've that's one thing I guess we nope. I don't want to dive into like the politics of child actors I and do. all Let's that do shit it. going on. Now I wanna say, were you about to imply that the Olsen twins were not doing actual acting and like meaningful? I was, I was about yeah, <laughs> meaningful is a good one. But I'm sure those their movies were meaningful to I I guess I wouldn't say quite millennials. But maybe maybe the the younger millennials, like yeah. borderline, or, or, right, or right on the yeah, like Anna's Anna's age group, like probably really enjoyed. And so, I mean, let's she, not, I don't want to delegitimize the work of the Olsen twins, but slippery. Yeah, we're on thin ice on here. Thin ice with here. The, with people, the people, I'm twins. sure people can be yeah, very. They're yeah. very upset. <laughs> <laughs> they're seething right now. Um, look, I love Full House. Um, so, yeah, it, it is like not something I can go back to no. because um, as an adult, and I watch it, it's like cringy as fuck, real cringy. Yeah, yeah look, hey guys, it's the Beach Boys hey. again. They're back. <laughs> you remember Uncle Jesse's friend, the Beach Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the one? Oh, this is um, Bri- Brian Smith's younger brother. You were in the Manson family. <laughs> Man, I'd love a fucking like episode of Full House where like Charlie Manson like gets involved. <laughs> it turns out Comet, him and Comet and Kimmy Gibbler. Yeah, Comet was Charlie Manson the whole time. <laughs> Comet is also the dog that convinced the son of Sam to com- commit all those yeah. murders. It all makes sense. Yeah, it all ties back to Comet. We've got red yarn. Comet's in the middle of the fucking board. <laughs> Mm. But it's been a pretty crazy week. Um, Jack is definitely not going to go to that uh, feeding clinic in Florida. Why not? What happened? Because of COVID. Uh, COVID. COVID. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask was you like, about that, no. actually. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not going to happen just because it's... Man, Florida's so bad. Florida's bad, Florida's yeah. so bad. And, like... And that's saying a lot, considering that it's bad everywhere. everywhere. Florida's the worst yeah. probably in the country i'd say they probably right up there anyway yeah that's the one i always hear you know yeah i, I mean on those the desantis the... is like you know blatantly like come on i'll fucking fight it head on come on no mask no nothing come on let's see how bad it can get yeah i'm super ready for schools to be shut down which i know is like a shitty thing to say because like a lot of people depend on the schools and stuff and like we want our kids to have good educations and all that, but I mean, God, we dude, also it, want like, living kids. It's we bad. also want them to be surviving. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. schools are what's going to make it even oh, worse. Dude, I and like right I, now, oh. Kentucky is just in the red, like yeah. in yep. that on that chart of positivity rates. Yeah, every single county in the state is in the red, and that hasn't happened. That didn't happen in the first part. Oh of the pandemic. no, like it was at least not as fast as it's happening now. So I'm. And, you know, we're seeing the kids in our neighborhood get on the bus and go to school. God, and I'm just like, God, that just makes me glad that our grandson, we're holding him back a year. I don't know how, it, you know, we all were convinced it was going to be better right. this mm-hmm. year uh, with the vaccine. And it is better for those who got vaccinated. Sure. But children, young children can't be vaccinated. I'm ready for that P- yeah. pediatric I vaccine. I am too. So bad. And it's just like. I don't know, man. I see all these kids getting on the bus, going to school, and I'm like, y'all are going to bring that shit home. I, I know personally they did three bring, people right now that have Someone COVID. gave something to Henry that Henry brought home today this whole week. So, yeah, kids are doing that. Yeah, we. I wish that we, I wish we could keep Henry at home, but, like, we both, Nikki and I both work. Yeah. And it's like, I know it's like that. I mean. Can't do it. Like the, the But if, like, the school shut down, we would have the, uh, you know, a reason to be like, I could be like, you could, yo, I got to work from home. I got, yeah, yep. I have to work from home. It's like, this is no, there's no option. Well, it's and like, we're, we're fortunate yeah. in our situation with my son and his wife both work full time as well. But uh-huh. Our grandson comes over. Tanya doesn't work right now and I work from home. So we've got that covered for them, which yeah. is nice, you know, even when school is a factor or if it isn't, you right. know, he'll be able to come over and stuff and, but that's I I do get the reality that a lot of people don't have that luxury that 
that benefit, yeah. you know? So I don't know. We didn't even a, have the option until like maybe a week ago when the school was like, okay, if you want to, if you want to like do the learning at home thing, you can do it, but you cannot switch back until the end of the semester. Right. And it's like, that kind of sucks that there's no, that, that yeah. flexibility is not built in, but like also I still can't do it. We still can't do it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like, uh, we need both of our incomes in order to mm -hmm. make shit work. So it's like, I can't just be like, bye work. Yeah. And it would be me because I mean, Nikki makes more money than I do. So sure, it's like, sure. uh, it would be me staying home. Plus I can do my job better. I, I can do my job. I was going to fix that, but I can do my job better at home. So yeah. there's no reason for you to go into it. Yeah, it's fucking like ridiculous. None at all. Unless, yeah, none unless, at all. yeah, there really isn't. Well, and it's, that's like for me, people are always saying, were you ever, ever going to come sit with us at the office? You're No, no, honestly, there's more distractions at the office. Not to mention, mm -hmm. I know people are exposed to COVID on a regular basis. We have two people right now that we work with that have COVID and are, you know, having to quarantine at home. And it's like, I don't understand. We kind of got, we kind of, I already know how to do this. I don't I don't mm -hmm. understand, but I know I don't know. It's just fucking nuts. And then we're talking now about booster shots coming soon. I'm yeah. so ready. Yeah. I'm so I am ready. too. I'll get it as soon as I can. Because <laughs> I asked. I was like, hey, I know I'm not immunosuppressed, but my son is. Can I get it? No, not yet. Yeah. And it, you know, I'll be doing that for sure. Uh fucking Kentucky is incentivizing um booster shots. There's a lottery that you can register with the state if you've been vaccinated for a million dollars. Like, and they have to, you have to give them consent to check with wherever you got it yeah. done to release that you have been vaccinated, fully vaccinated or whatever. But you sign in and you register yourself and you could win a million dollars just for, I mean, that's, that's mm. where it's gotten. It's like, well, yeah. here's a, here's a trillion to one shot at a million dollars. Just anything, please get, vaccinated yeah. can thing, you, you imagine know? if we didn't have Andy Bashir and we had Matt Bevin still can you fucking imagine no, no, <laughs> no. I don't How think about it we would be we would be Florida we would be fucking we would Florida. and it's and it sucks because Andy Bashir tried stepping back into that big daddy role mm -hmm. and yeah. saying hey guys get your vaccines we need mask mandates we need this this is this How many? is worse than it was before and then the supreme court of kentucky stepped in and yeah. said nope everybody hates you and you're limiting have your power. power now so good luck well and he's been like, sued how many times too oh god i mean that's yeah. why he was not in his daddy role for a minute there because exactly. it's like, oh shit i'm getting sued constantly yeah <laughs> but at the end of the day the guy was just trying to speak common sense and yep. get people to fucking wake up and say, hey, it's just not about your personal freedoms. It's about the health and safety of everyone, everyone around you. Yeah. And But people still want to just fight about it, and it's it's disappointing and depressing, as honestly. As of last Wednesday, the hospital I work at had the last ice, open ICU bed in western Kentucky. Like, mm. it's fucking... Awful. And that <laughs> says nothing about the people who have heart attacks or strokes that can't be treated. I read a story yep. the other day. I mean, it's on the internet. Is it true? I don't know, but it could be a. You, it could you be did a, say it's on the internet. It could so be a yeah. fable. It's on TikTok, so it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's the it's the situation that's actually sadly becoming kind of a trope. My cousin went into the emergency room having a stroke, and we lost her yesterday because we couldn't get her treated. But that stuff really does happen. There yeah. are people that are coming in with non-COVID related stuff that are having to wait in line behind the people that have it and that have poisoning from ivermycin. And then, so. they, yeah, and <laughs> God. and then they say the ninety-two percent of the people in the hospital across the country and around the world are the ones that aren't vaccinated, and it's just it sucks. The whole situation is just a mess, and I I hate that. You know. You got to send the kid to school and mm -hmm. you got to go to work and you've got to do all this stuff. We're not even ta at my work. We're not even talking about the possibility of everyone working from home again. It's not even come up. Yeah, and I know same. for a fact, at least three of the people that I work with directly haven't gotten the vaccine mm -hmm. and they go to hospitals to do IT work and stuff right. and they haven't been vaccinated. And I'm like, you're going to the literal worst place in places in the world in our country anyway to be exposed to this, oh, well, I had COVID at the beginning of the year, or, well, that doesn't 
That does, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You can it's get it again. It's not chicken pox? Yeah, it's not chicken pox. You can get it again. Blake thought he had it again. And, no shit. Yep. He quarantined. Turned out uh, his wife had a false positive, which supposedly, you know, is that can happen. incredibly yeah, yeah. rare. Yeah. But yeah, so they, they thought they, because they're both vaccinated and they thought they had it and they quarantined and then. Turned out, yeah, she had a false positive, but they're still like scared, like, oh, yeah, it could happen sure. anytime, well, anywhere, for any reason. I've heard, and I know a couple of people that are in the field, my aunt being one of them, she's, she's always said that for viral tests, like to see if you've got something like an AIDS test or mm-hmm. a COVID test or whatever, for something virus related, false positives are much more common than false negatives. So, like, almost always, if it comes back negative, you're negative. But not always if you're positive. Is it accurate is what I'm getting at. So, you know, again, adds more confusion to the yep. to the to the mess. I just I don't know, man. Henry got me sick, but uh it's not COVID, I'm pretty sure. No fever. It's like a lot of congestion. That's why I sound like the way that I sound. Uh I was going uh, man. I got a lot of different tangents leading into like <laughs> like flowing into each other, but it's like um, I wanted to stream. I streamed Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom because it's the Tadpog Discord mm-hmm. game of the month, um, and it is uh, pretty charming. Honestly, mm-hmm. it is an adventure game. I promise I'm going to get back. There's a there's a thread here. Okay, uh, I was so I streamed the first part of it, and I was going to stream the second part of it, but I didn't do that for two reasons. The first reason was. Nikki was out of town for work, uh-huh. uh, and I was home alone with Henry. So it was my sole responsibility to get his ass to school in the morning, go to work, pick him up from school after work, get him, make sure his homework is done, get him in bed, and then do it again. Mm-hmm. So because of that, I was like, uh, I'm going to put off Princess Tomato until like I'm not fucking maxed out. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like at the end of every, like 8 o'clock, it's like, well, I'm going to bed because I'm really fucking tired. But like on top of that, um, Henry came home one day with the sniffles, and it's like, okay, I'll keep an eye on that. And because I am a human fucking garbage disposal <laughs> right. with no fucking common sense, um, I ate after him because he had a breadstick that looked really fucking delicious <laughs> that he didn't finish. And completely, like even when I was eating it, I was like, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea, especially right now. This is a super bad idea. I know I'm vaccinated, but brr, you know. It's a good breadstick, though. It was a really good breadstick. <laughs> I'm not saying it was worth it. It certainly wasn't. Don't try this at home, but it was a good breadstick. Um, and uh, I got sick, and then he was totally better the next day. I mean, like, he had the sniffles for like 20 minutes, and then three days later, I'm like, well, I just take DayQuil tablets for the rest of my life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this has been, like, the fucking summer of, like, I had the upper respiratory infection, Mm. I had food poisoning, and now it's, like, I know this is, like, a head cold, but it's still, like, super annoying, and it's, like, anytime I, I'm, like, straining to not cough, I'm, like, sitting in my office, and it's, like, well, I got a cough, better do it under under wraps, and so now it's, like, oh, fuck, man. Dude, dude's got COVID. He's got COVID. Yeah. It, at which I should bust out my office and been like, you know, if I was working from home, you wouldn't be worried about this shit at all. <laughs> yep. Well, my dad. Maybe who, you should just be coughing all the time while you're there. Yeah. Right? yeah I don't know. Wait, I don't just know. Tune it out. Here's some dice. You can roll them. <laughs> yeah, could be anything. <laughs> my dad is in the jewelry industry and he does yeah. a lot of speaking and a lot of traveling or he did. And apparently they're rolling out the jewel, the big jewelry show of the year. Yeah. And they're doing it this year yeah in las vegas and he's he's there right now and i'm like i told him i was like dad dude that is a terrible fucking idea yep and he's like oh well they're doing it all safe temperature checks and covid tests and six mm-hmm. foot non da, 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 masks required and i'm like i don't care you're in that is yep. the literal definition of a super spreader and and his wife my stepmom she messaged me separately because she'd been up his ass about don't go don't do it yep. and he's like but i have to it's my job and it's, i just can't walk away from this that and he's old enough to fu- he could have retired five years ago is he, he vaccinated won't. yes okay that's good he won't retire 
you know, he's going to... I mean, I was in a similar situation. Sorry to interrupt, no. but like with Nikki leaving for work, yeah. I had a conversation with her where I was like, "Should you? Do are you this? sure this is yeah. a good idea? And she's like, I can quarantine when I come back if you want. And I was like, well, I fucking, of course I don't want that. Right. So I guess we'll all just die. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, yeah, because she was with my mom and dad. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> had a good trip with my parents. Right. Because um, mom was telling me like, no, we masked. Not a lot of people masking while we were there. But you also got to wear these ropes around your neck. There were different colors designating if you were okay with like coming up and talking and shaking hands right. or, you know, t- or wave at a distance or leave me alone. So, <laughs> well, she, my stepmom was like, she's texted me separately and she was like, I'm really frustrated with him right now. I've been bitching at him about this for a week. I don't want him to go. She's like, we've both been vaccinated and I'm healthy as a horse, but he has some health issues and i'm like mm. what what the fuck health issues are you because my dad is like me he won't tell you if something's wrong so apparently he's got other problems and but he went anyway and he's at that age he's just like my grandmother who is pushing a hundred who's like well i'm never going to the doctor again Jeez. i mean if i die i die and i'm like dad you're 76 or what it's like 72 i think he's 72 I'm like, dude, that is the fucking shittiest attitude to have. Yep. What would Ronald Reagan do? <laughs> Go to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, look, look, I just said. I mean, it's like. I can't stay home to make like, the, make, know, the, like make, make the gay people go to work and then deny that they're gay. <laughs> that's what Ron Reagan was This is, is different. AIDS though. really a thing? Dad's not. Dad's, Send Rock Hudson to his dad. <laughs> dad's not living paycheck to paycheck like I do. Yeah. You know, he's got a. He's got a he's pretty wealthy in that to me. I mean, not like, you know, Jeff Bezos wealthy. Right. But he's got money. They're set up. They're good to go. And he could stop doing this any time and they'll be just fine. I mean, their social security that they draw every month is more than I make <laughs> in two months by by far. And so he's just being stubborn. He's this big figurehead in the industry everyone knows him and he's on the magazine covers for all the trade publications and he gets paid a ridiculous amount of money to go speak to people and teach classes and do all the stuff that he does which is great i mean he's excelled in his profession but he won't let go of it and i'm afraid that's going to come at the cost of his life yeah because i just i just don't want him to go do something that's completely unnecessary i get it I do. It, it, you going to work is different. You've got to go to work. Well, you I could no also choice. see me being 72 and being like, eh, if I die, I die. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty close to that already. So right. it's like 34 more years. And it's my like, quest oh, yeah. log's like 95% full. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just tired. Yeah. I don't have time to finish all these quests, man. I know it's just fishing quests. Yeah, so I right. can die. It's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Henry, you grow up and then. Yeah. There you go. That's like the final quest. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't wind up in jail. I guess the moral of the story is just get your shots, people, and be careful and be smart and just be nice to one another because you never know. It's true. Yeah, there have been multiple. Um, the, the you know COVID first came out, no one in my department got it. I mean everything was fine. Now five. You know, five people always out, always on quarantine. Yeah. Multiple family members. Like, my dad was going to come in to visit for his birthday, and like, he has a coworker he works closely with shit. who hasn't tested positive yet because she she's quarantined because she was working with somebody closely who did test positive. So it's like, and the last I heard, she was running a, a fever. So it's like, all right, here we go. So my dad's like, I, I'm not going to visit. Right. He's like, I don't want to get Henry sick. Kudos to him for that. Not yeah, going to do real. it. He's vaccinated. <clears throat> right. But, but he, I mean, you can still it's, carry it. Right, exactly. Yeah. The, and I know we're all vaccinated. Yeah. You can still carry it. I read today that sure. the viral load you carry, even vaccinated, is the same as if you're not vaccinated. So you can spread that shit just as easily when you're vaccinated. My load is super heavy as Tadpog lore. Yeah, we got Peter, <laughs> the Peter, Nuf- 
Peter North viral low. <laughs> I, I am like the Peter Newf, though. Peter like, Newf. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite Peter North. We have Peter North at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peter Newf. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Peter North at home. Because I look at him day. and I'm like, I don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> No one's that impressed when I do what he does. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the missing factor? <laughs> but I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make this a COVID podcast. No, but no like, it's important. We haven't seen each other also for mm-hmm. like over a week. So well, like, we're also still in each other's bubbles, so I'm not sweating it too much anyway. You know, us being around each other. Yeah. But. Yeah. If we were like really super being good, we'd like do this remotely or something. I thought about that earlier, but then I thought, you know, it's just the three of us. We're vaccinated. I, I'm not going to see my grandson for a couple of days. You know, yeah. it's just, and I, his parents work. If he's going to get it, it <laughs> you ain't know, coming is, from me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you work at home. I yeah. don't know. And I don't like mean to be shitty about this at all, but like in 100% honesty, like if we were at, needed to do this remotely i'd rather not do it yeah no, I get it. <laughs> like, we, we did it before it wasn't it's not the same did we when did we do it remote mm-hmm. all I three of us actually yeah the one when i got Hank, super NBA fucking drunk Hank time no it was the it, it was, was the, the other one wasn't it oh god i can never remember what that game was I was I was at home and I was super drunk. I got really I fucking drunk. You, yeah. What? I got was like, I, yeah, yeah. I got yeah, like yeah. Pokemon Snap drunk. <laughs> How long? I don't remember. I remember until the end. I was like, man, I've never seen Ian like this before. But were you and I together? No, we were no, all we remote. We were all we, remote. Yeah. What is this? Like a Nikki had the scare at work um, when uh, when somebody had it. So yeah. we went remote for two episodes in a row. And I was on two in a row. I was on one of them. Why don't I remember this? NBA hang time was one of them. I know for sure. I can't remember the other one. God, I cannot remember the damn game. So wait, I recorded at home. Yep. Oh my god! No, this is a this is seriously a void. Like this is like I smoked this out or something because like (laughs) I don't remember this shit at all. I do because I listened back to it and I was like, Jesus Christ! You were drunk. Oh God, I was fucked up. I was acting a fool. I mean, it wasn't like awful until the end, and I was just being dumb. No, this is insane that I don't remember this. I feel like you guys got together before we recorded, and no, like this happened. And it, it, it either happened or I dreamed the whole thing, which <laughs> in which case is fine. Man, that's wild, dude. Okay, wow. Maybe I should go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that prevagen, dude. <laughs> no, we did. Was it legend? We no, did legend. It was not legend. It was. Yep. <laughs> wow. Or world world heroes. World heroes. I remember world game. heroes. World heroes. I don't remember that game. being remote. That's wild. Okay. Because yep. I did it in my office, and I was actually running the NVIDIA voice because my air conditioner, it was hot, and my yeah. air conditioner kept kicking it on. Well, fuck it then. Never mind. I, I, I mean, it does suck to do it remotely Yeah. for like a lot of different reasons. Like the energy is totally, assume, I assume, different. Oh, yeah, I don't the, know. Ep- episodes are, it's, it's definitely not the same. Yeah. The energy's good here, and also, like, man, I would have had to have edited that. That's fucking ridiculous mm-hmm. that I do not remember. That we did two of them that way. Yep. Totally don't remember. Yep. <laughs> this is not a bit. Totally don't remember. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> Call the police. Yeah, man. Shit, man. Did I get fucking body swapped at some point? <laughs> did I get men in blacked? Maybe. Maybe you got the flashy thing. Men, yeah. men in blacked out, more like it. The neuralizer. Oh, God. Huh. Okay. Yeah. No, but I'm. You're right. If we if we were being if we were maximizing, you know, we'd be doing it remotely. But yeah, I'm with you working from home, and I mean, Nikki and my mom, and we're all. You know, I don't have a lot of contact <laughs> with really. I go home. I go to work, and I go home, and I go here. These like are literally the three places that I go. Uh, I've yeah. been to the post office a couple times this month, but I've masked up. <laughs> Because, like, you know, I got to get my NASRGB. Oh, I, ma- I mask up everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. go to Walmart once a week. I, wa- I wear my mask. If I'm going in some, like, if I'm going to just pick up takeout through the drive through I, I don't mask yeah, up. Dude, but if I'm going inside somewhere, I do wear my mask. The drive through situation is like if Seinfeld was a show running right now, George would be having a conversation with Jerry. When I go through the drive through do I wear the mask? Do I not wear the mask? What do I do? What's the protocol? Yeah. They're wearing the mask. 
I have a mask. Do I wear it? But it's like, here's the problem. You're communicating with a person like through two windows. Yeah. And it's like, if you're both wearing a mask, it's like, there's something that's going to get lost in translation there. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know. I generally don't when I'm in the drive through, but like the way that like Chick fil A was set up, I don't know if they're still set up that way out by the mall where they had this wickedly. They're closed now. Are they closed? Yeah, for renovation. Oh, that's right. right. Well, they had this like really elaborate drive through setup. Yeah. And, and it was it's actually like, a, like you're no, get in and great. get out. It was fast. It was great. Yeah. Despite the fact that the cars are wrapped around the building 10 times, yeah. you still get through it. But they, they actually walk up to your window and approach you. I put on my mask for that. Yeah. But between, I don't know if there's a difference. I mean, I probably should wear it when I'm in the drive through window as well, but I don't always do that. But inside places, fuck yes. Yep. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting those looks from yeah. all the young mass people like, what? Do you not get the vaccine or what what's the matter with you? Why are you wearing a mask? It's like there have to be shit masks. It hasn't changed that much since this time last year, y'all. There have to be masks <laughs> that just have print simple print on them that says I'm vaccinated. Yeah. You know, like vaccinated and careful. Just right yeah, there. that's yeah. A, yeah, for real. Those need to exist. Just as vaccinated and careful. Just Tad, to like Tadpog. Give, yeah, right. Yeah, listen to Tadbog. Tadbog.com. Also found on Spotify. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Tadbog. <laughs> Check out NBA Hang Time and World Heroes. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's wild. I don't remember those at all. I usually don't remember anything about this show anyway, but yeah. like that being a special occasion that happened, like a special thing that happened twice. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> that's like, man. I know this isn't how interventions work, but if you guys are planning an intervention, give me a heads up so I can make sure <laughs> I'm not streaming that night. <laughs> I also played, uh, speaking of adventure games and totally pivoting off of this terrifying revelation, um, I have been on this. I Have you guys heard about a game that came out not too long ago called 12 Minutes? Mm -mm. I haven't. It's a game that's done by like... Um, I think the developer is called Annapurna, and it Daisy Ridley voices a character. Um, uh, James McAvoy, okay, uh, voices a character, and then um, I cannot fucking remember his name for the life of me right now. But he played the Green Goblin in Spider Man. Willem Dafoe. Oh, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe yeah. Thank you. I'm ashamed I couldn't remember his name, but obviously I'm not remembering a lot. So um, I'm something of a Willem Dafoe fanatic myself. myself. So nice. <laughs> excellent audio beams are back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's an adventure game that all takes place within like a three room apartment, um, and it's the reason I don't normally like adventure games. I'm terrified Michelle hopefully is getting excited because she's like, oh man, he's found one that maybe he fucking likes. I like Princess Tomato, but that's just because of the fucking janky ass charm that that game has where it's like just crudely drawn vegetable people and it's like yeah. man this game existed and it came out and like man it's That's a, enough. It's, it's a real thing <laughs> yeah. yeah that that I could actually go out and buy if I wanted to mm. but like 12 minutes is like this time loop thing it's like um, it's like groundhog day but it resets every 12 minutes um or when you die uh and it is like the situation where uh, you play um, a man who is married to uh, a woman, uh, and then they are interrupted by um, a man who claims to be a cop um, who uh, wants to get information from them. So it's like you just go through it, and it's super fucking dark. Like, it, it's super dark, and that's why I like it. I was drawn in because I was like, because of the name, like the actors. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, I feel like I should check this out. It's on Game Pass for free, so why yeah, the fuck yeah, not? Yeah. And um, I, so I checked it out, but then it's like the darkness is the thing that was like, all right, I'm going to stick around with this. Because, like, the dude who comes and interrupts you is, like, fucking extremely dangerous and it's like so you have to be very careful around him and it's like he's looking for a thing and he's willing to do whatever to get that thing so um, jimmy the bull comes and asks you for information <laughs> jimmy the bull if jimmy the bull had like a, like a completely different alignment shift mm. i mean because jimmy i feel like is 
typically a good guy. Still, yeah, yeah. Good. this is a but it, but it is like Jimmy. Like if he's got his mind set on mm. something, it's mm. it is that. But this dude is like he doesn't like. There's no second thought about like doing whatever it takes to get this thing. And because of that, like. Uh, it, it's fun because it's like you're uncovering different pieces of the puzzle. Like each you're trying to each loop. It's super frustrating when you go through a full fucking loop and don't uncover anything because it's like, all right, I got to set all this it's shit up again. And like, again. yeah, see what I missed. And it is like, it d- still has those adventure game things that I hate where it's like, Oh, I got to fucking combine these two items that it's like, it's a little more obvious, but it's still, some of the puzzles are very obtuse. Where pineapple it's... pin, <laughs> right? Or a pineapple pin. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so it still has that kind of stuff, but because the trappings are like, I don't know, it just feels dangerous, and it's like that's enough for me to be like, all right, I'm gonna s- see if I can. Game Pass, the only platform it's on right now, or I think it's on PC as well, okay. but I'm not positive. Um, I have I bought a three month Game Pass for a dollar. They had a special. Nice. I may play it on my phone or something. I did that too, and then they totally. It was. I felt like it was worth it because I was playing the games enough. What's nice? This is not a paid promotion for Game Pass, but if my, if Microsoft wants to give us money, they can. <laughs> um, I'll gladly accept that. But I love Game Pass because it's like because I'm already paying for it. I don't feel bad if I put down a game I don't like. Yeah, it's like well, I tried this. It sucks. Moving on. Yeah. Next. So I want to play Psychonauts 2 because that's on Game Pass as well. So anyway, that's my that's my Game Pass Game Pass spot. My right. Game Pass. Game Pass spot. Sorry, I've been talking a shitload. I'm excited. Excited to be here. Yeah. 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 Me too. It's weird to be here right now. During the day. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the sun fully yeah. up. It's morning still, it, technically. So well, you can pretend it's not. There are no like, windows well, in here. Well, being in here, it's like being in the movie theater. You know that phenomenon where you go in in the movie theater and it's daytime, it's, yeah. and then you leave and you come and out nighttime. and it's like what? Or it's still daytime. Or it's still that's daytime. the one that's I feel weird, weird when it's still daytime. It's like yeah, what? Yeah. I don't watch movies during the day. What is <laughs> right. this madness? It's like that. I'm gonna open the door and be like the sun. <laughs> I've got you guys don't see it, but I in my peripheral vision, I've got. Um, oh, this the beam door. of under light the from under door. the garage yeah, door. Yeah. So I have a constant reminder <laughs> that it is, in fact, daytime. <laughs> well, I pulled up and you were running behind and you hadn't come out yet. And no I'm surprise. Sitting, I'm sitting in the driveway like we did say this morning at 11, right? But we did. we did. That's why. I And I lost my phone because yeah. it was like, and as you soon as, like, tell as, us soon as I right. found it, I was like, I got to let these guys know <laughs> that I am on my way, but I am late, as always. <laughs> um, so... Thanks for waiting for yeah, me. No <laughs> Although it would have been funny if you would have started the podcast and I come in 15 minutes. And, and yeah. hit record 15 minutes. <laughs> it's, you, it's, the red, it's the red circle, oh, you guys. Gotcha. Yeah, in case you need to start without me. <laughs> we, should do that. we should do that next time. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it. And I told Tyler, I was like, if you and Ian want to do it, totally cool. Or I can just run the board uh, while you guys do it. But I'm glad that I'm feeling up for it. Yeah, me too. I'll always be available to fill in for one of you if you can't make it. That's awesome. That's really good to know. We 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 killed the time while you were running getting here. Did I miss the blowjobs? Fuck, man. Well, I always... we started with blowjobs, <laughs> but then we decided it would be better to watch the documentary mm-hmm. on Mean Girls. On Mean Girls, Clu- I love how Mean you're Girls <laughs> bringing it to our topic. Clueless really, and Pretty in Pink. You're really good. You should have a podcast. Maybe about something that you like a lot. No, I don't know. Works. I don't think that would work out. <laughs> yeah. You should I have think, a podcast that yeah. hinges on John Turley's availability. Yeah, I, I, I think people would really enjoy it. I think people are asking about <laughs> I'm it. I'm gonna a lot. say yeah. I'm gonna do the whole podcast, and it's gonna be like all it is is like, well, we were gonna talk about this today, but John's not here, so. That's that. There's really <laughs> nothing to say. So see you next week. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ian and John's Star Trek podcast. <laughs> oh, you guys want to talk about Mean Girls? Yeah, I want to talk about Mean Girls. Talk about Mean Girls. All right. You hear that, Dave? We talked about everything else. <laughs> everything I don't. Else. I don't hear it. <laughs> well, what is all it? All right. <laughs> I, I can info. Don't I can Alex this. Jones info world. Don't info do that to me. Style. I literally said before we started recording, I have zero notes. <laughs> don't don't do that. I have a bunch of notes. <laughs> Ian, do you hear that? <laughs> I do hear that. It's a bunch of rumored developed games falling off the train that we like to call 
Ian uh, reads from Ian, his notes. Ian reads from <laughs> his Ian, notes. Ian reads from the burn book. <laughs> from the burn book. <laughs> I, I did not rewatch Mean Girls this week like I planned to, but I've seen it so many times I remember it's it. Fucking well. great. It's, it's, it's fucking great. It's a really good great. movie. It's a, it's a great movie. Nikki I liked hadn't it. seen it, so oh, wow. she got to watch uh, it. She liked it. Yeah, yeah, she loved yeah, it. Yeah, How do you yeah. not like that movie? Yeah. She, I didn't expect this. So it came out in 2004. I remember I was on a date, and I was just like, let's go see a bad movie. I bet Mean Girls is dumb. No, <laughs> sat down. All the people in the theater fucking loved it. it oh, it was fucking so loved good. it. It does suffer from looking like it would be dumb. That's the problem mm-hmm. with that's the movie. The, that's the point. I know, but it's like, which makes it a good movie. Yeah, I mean, Tina Fey was just coming off SNL, yeah. and, and it yeah. definitely has an SNL vibe to it. Like, I mean, I mean Tim Meadows is in Tim it. Meadows so, yeah. is in it. Right. Yeah, he's the but, principal, but not just the cast. Like a lot of the, like a lot of like the structure of it even feels like because there are segments that definitely f- it's it's cool because like there are segments that feel like kind of sketchy. Not in like a shady kind of way, Sketchy. but they kind of feel like sketches. Sketch comedy. sketches. Yeah, some yeah. of the scenes kind of feel like that to me, but then other scenes definitely have like a 30 Rock vibe to me, where it's like, especially when they're doing like, um, like a lot of the jokes definitely do. And like when they're doing like the kind of like the confession cam s- s- scenes, yeah, where like the kids are saying, like all of that stuff felt very 30 Rock to me. Well, in every scene that Tim Meadows was in was a Tim Meadows sketch from yes. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's just he's got kind of one speed, right? Mm-hmm. And that's not he's a bad thing. He's fucking great. He's so he's fucking Tim funny. Yeah. Um, his asides, you know, it's always uh-huh. his asides that just make me sort of chuckle. And I can't quote anything at the moment because, like I said, I haven't, I didn't rewatch it this week, but I remember, I remember that movie well just because it, it was good. I liked those movies, you know. I really liked Clueless and I liked Pretty in Pink and yeah. all those movies are so classic. And I think it was it was kind of a accomplishment, honestly, to make a movie like that at the time that it was made mm-hmm. and have it fit right in to that to that genre and be so good and so funny, but also, you know, it had its good moments of joy and sadness and mm-hmm. anger you know those things i just think it was a really fucking well done movie and That's i'll great. watch it anytime i'm glad that you brought up pretty in pink because like when we were i didn't want to spoil anything for nikki but like when we were done watching the movie i said this movie reminds me of like this is like a and this is proves how old i am a modern day <laughs> uh john hughes movie yeah. this movie's 2004 like tyler said i'm super mm. old <laughs> so um and because it does, it has that vibe to it because it is a teen comedy, mm-hmm. but it is also very watchable for pretty much any age group. Now, my go-to from that particular genre, from that particular generation, is Sixteen Candles. Yeah. I I like that better than Pretty in Pink, just because it's just silly and not licensed to drive. No, I don't know if that was a John Hughes movie. Or not. That's where <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall kind of got his start with Sixteen Candles. Yeah. You know? and I mean, I just all of those types of movies, I really, I really dig it. And I think is John Cryer Sixteen right Candles in. where he's in? He's in Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink. Okay. Because I remember uh, Ready Player Two has the whole huge thing about. I haven't read it yet. Okay. Well, it's, just the, well, lore about Pretty in Pink right, is okay. that Robert Downey Jr. was supposed to play that part. Oh, and the, the didn't, I see. Of Ducky, I think it. Uh, he was Cryer's supposed character. to play Ducky because he he's in the movie, right? It's been a long fucking time since he's pretty a big. Fuck. So yeah, it, okay. I mean, Ducky. They was, they changed yeah. the ending because John Cryer and Molly Ringwald had such terrible chemistry. The original ending was that she gets with Ducky when he was played by Robert Downey Jr. But they just I could they see did that. not get along, they, so they changed it for I've never seen it. Gotcha. He so got, they changed okay. it for her to get it's together been a with the job. It's a long time since I've seen it. Well, at the end, he kind of is resolved. Cry, John Cryer, Ducky, is mm-hmm. kind of resolved to, okay, I accept my fate kind of thing. Yeah. As in, he, you're not going to get this girl. But I did not know the thing about Robert Downey. Mm-hmm. That would have made more sense. And that's how 16 Candles ended. I mean, she crushed on the jock that drove the Porsche, yeah. you know, and at the end of the day, they ended up becoming a thing and all this madness that leads up to it and so on and so forth. But anyway, those are always like, it was, I was thinking this morning, like the teen comedies, like that, like that genre, because I was thinking about Mean Girls, of course, and John Hughes, uh, Pretty in Pink and like all those movies. 
it's it's kind of like it's really interesting because those movies are marketed to young people and because they're marketed to young people they're like fucking time capsules they really are i mean and it's breakfast like breakfast club is like the perfect example of that the yeah. breakfast club i mean it's just that and it taught me that marijuana makes people fucking go crazy, yeah. dude. <laughs> crazy. crazy. Mm. It makes them go fucking they just crazy. Dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that scene, man, is uh, just yeah. It's cringy, but it's super at cringy. The time, I know, right? Oh, it was it's awesome. perfect for it the time wonderful. because it's like, of course, it does that. There, did you not know there's a war on drugs right now? <laughs> just ask Ronald Reagan, right. who's our president. Yeah, I pledged to Nancy that I would never do the marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and that was off of one joint, by the way. Yeah, they right, all got that joint. fucking stoned yeah. off of one joint. Yeah, fucking lightweights. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid kids. <laughs> anyway, Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Mean Girls. It's a good movie. Check it out. Oh, man. I, after I watched that, then that's what I went and got. As soon as it came mean out, Girls Tina, too. Oh, Tina Fey's uh, <laughs> uh, audio book, her autobiography. Bossy that Pants. She reads Bossy Pants. Is yeah, so, it's really good. So fucking good. Best cover ever, honestly. Best book cover ever ever designed. What is it? I don't remember. It's essentially her, but she has like fat old man hands like posing on oh. her face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she made this into a Broadway musical too. Did she Ma- really? Mean Girls is, and she did it. She's. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's no, awesome. It is awesome. I think it's still playing right now. I think it has been very well received. Nice. That's great. It's been like a, a few years, but yeah, it's been on Broadway, and it's either on Broadway or just right off Broadway type of thing. But yeah, has anyone here seen Mean Girls too? I probably have, but I, I don't remember it. I have not. She's not involved in that one at all, right? I don't. I honestly don't I'd know. Probably not. Let me bring it up and look to see if anything refreshes my memory because I don't remember. I don't remember seeing it, but I bet I have. Because we got Nikki and I got done watching Mean Girls, and it's like, you know, there's a Mean Girls too. I hear it's awful, and it'll probably erase the good vibes that we've mm. just created by mm. watching Good yeah. Girls. <laughs> However, maybe for the sake of the show, I should rent that. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. Tim Meadows Let's is watch in YouTube that for still. four hours instead. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Tim Meadows, Meadows came in, back in the second one. He revised his role. It was 2011. That's no, uh, think, seven years later. I don't think I've seen this. Shit. This does not ring a bell. Our podcast is almost as old as Mean Girls 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably glad that I haven't seen it because that's just one of those you know they're going to make a sequel but you know the sequel's going to be bad mm, yeah. yeah because Lindsay Lohan was so good in the movie and she you know, is really good in that movie everybody shits on Lindsay Lohan but I really like like her I don't have a problem with her and in this movie she was fine she was no she was funny, good in this movie uh, played I, her role perfectly I don't know that I, I don't really I can't name a whole bunch of movies she's been in that I've seen so well, like, she was in Parent Trap I think mm-hmm. oh that's yeah but that's like that's she was super young in yeah, that. Yeah, she was that's, young, and then Herbie. She was in a few Herbie yeah. movies, yeah. which I only saw one or two of them. Which, like, not sitting down to watch. Right. They just happened to be on. I saw them in school on the big CRT. <laughs> they rolled in on yeah. the AV cart <laughs> when my teacher was hungover. So her her first few SNL gigs were fantastic. She was great. Yeah, but then you know all the shit in her personal life went down. And sure, fell apart. And then when she came back and did it, you know, trying to. Make a comeback, like you could tell. Like it, it's heartbreaking to see like how talented she was back in the day, and then like she fucking fried her brain yeah. because yeah. she is a she is a different person when she comes back. Like you can tell, like oh, you have lost like six steps, and in five years, like you're still a very young person. Yeah, it was just yeah, it's 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 very it's it's sad. It is happened. really sad. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. Because, yeah, I agree. I think she's great in Mean Girls. I mean, like, mm-hmm. she's fantastic in the movie. Um, and beautiful. I mean, yeah. I think she looks better. Like, that's her, that's to me is the peak of the way she looked, like her style and mm-hmm. stuff in Mean Girl. And I mean, pre the turning into Which a plastic. She turns plastic, yeah. You know, just she was, she's very pretty in there. And I just think, yeah, I think it's a shame that she had so much stuff go on and kind of. Yeah, because her parents are fucking crazy, and yeah. then everything she's gonna do just being a child actor is traumatic anyway. She was, she was in an episode of King of the Hill. 
Okay. She does a lot of spots, a lot she, of like she's guest spots purse. and stuff. She's Bobby's purse. <laughs> That's my purse. That's my low hand. <laughs> I don't know you. Jenny Medina is her name in King of the Hill. I don't okay, know. I'll have to track that one. one she was one episode from 2004. What was she in after Mean Girls? Well, that's that's what she was in right after Mean Girl. Oh, okay. King of the okay, Hill. Okay. And then after that, it, she was a like a guest spot in that 70s show. Yeah, when she was dating Wilmer Valderrama. Um, <laughs> then the Herbie movie, Fully Loaded, was 2005. Didn't know that existed. And then she goes... She was in a movie she, with Meryl Streep. Stuff. Like, she was said to be doing really well. She was in that's... a Prairie Home Companion. The Holiday. I don't, I don't know any of these movies. Can Ugly Betty TV show? She was in that for a minute. Okay. Can I ask you guys a question? I really don't know the answer to this. She was in Machete. So, wow. like, I remember her being him. Yeah, I've for, forgotten about that. Glee. Go ahead. Why? Why did? Why was everybody? I like. I remember. I was around when like the whole like Lindsay Lohan shit was blowing up. Mm -hmm. But like. Why do we care so much? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, and it's kind of weird now, especially because it's, I guess, because we're going through like pandemics and shit. But it's like, really, like, why do we, why do we care? Like, because it's easy, I think, for people to pick on celebrities that are having problems. And rather than support them, they would rather see them crash and burn. Just mm -hmm. like you, same reason people go to NASCAR. Right yeah. Now. You know what I mean? But like, she, it seems, I didn't realize that she, like, no offense to to Ms. Lohan, but like it doesn't seem like she was that prolific. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. She, had said, she I mean, I think she was on a trajectory to be prolific. Yeah, and because just, of Mean Girls, you think? Or uh, well, I think because of her child acting with like the Parent Trap, Herbie, Mean Girls. She had, and then I remember she did that movie with Meryl Streep. She was on. She was on it, and she was attractive and desirable. She was the it. She was the it girl. She was. I remember that. Time. So I think yeah. she was just. She was poised yeah. for greatness, she, and then everybody, everybody watches a train wreck. You can't. She was away. in the Freaky Friday. Freaky, Freaky Friday. Friday yeah, movie. we watched that one in school too. Yep. We um, watched a lot of Lindsay Lohan oh, movies she was in a, school. As wasn't it she out. a Disney kid? Yeah, I think so. Because Herbie's Disney, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. I meant like, like oh, like Britney, a mouse like Britney Spears and Justin uh, Timberlake. Were. I don't know. Uh, just kind of going back a little bit. Cause... But that's also kind of like, I almost brought up Britney Spears because it's like, Britney Spears, I can kind of understand why everything with her was as big a deal as it was. Mm. Um, because in my opinion, Britney, I mean, she was a fucking like icon. Like, you know what yep. I mean? Like she was yep. like top tier celebrity kind of status. So of course, like everybody's watching her, but it's yep. like Lindsay Lohan's like, I don't, but I think you're right, Tyler. I think it was because of like her their trajectory. It Every, was there. Everybody yeah. was looking for her to be the just continue to be the big thing. Yeah. And then and she was running around with Paris Hilton and yep. all of them. Was and she just getting into that world? Yeah. Who apparently Paris Hilton now has a cooking show on Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. I saw that. that. I saw the thing that. for that yesterday. Is it called This Food is So Hot? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it's called like Paris like, Cooks or something. I don't know. I want to thank you both for laughing. I appreciate that. That, that. Was, that was good. No, I appreciate that was good. It. That um, we, we both got the reference. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a week where my life revolved around her sex tape leak. <laughs> <laughs> was it Brian Poe saying, I fucking hate her in a little rat face, <laughs> but I would fuck her little rat butthole. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man what's fucked up is that like most of her imdb credits are appearances on talk shows yeah and entertainment tonight and you know stuff where she's given interviews right well, i think everybody was shocked like just seeing everything unravel and then when she started dating that samantha ronson girl like that's when all the i remember that the guy yeah it was um she's a, a dj mm-hmm um, a ma masculine lesbian. Like I think everybody saw that and freaked out because every every guy wanted her, every guy girl wanted to look like her, and then see her doing Wilmer Valderrama, and then Samantha Ronson, and then everything with the drinking and the binging, and then yeah. all the pictures of her. Like that's all the stuff I heard. Up was the binging, yeah, you know, stuff getting out of cars yeah. and shit, and yeah. uh, shows her <laughs> appearances on Saturday Night Live, Rapunzel and Margaret, Jessica Simpson. 
herself and Hermione Granger. Her, I remember Hermione was like that. Yeah, was, that's that a, was a huge that's skit. A big, yeah. yeah, one. That's a big one. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's I a really I good seen sketch. That sketch. I need to look that up. Yeah, for sure. If you can, like SNL's gotten better about that stuff, but like for a minute there, like you couldn't find. Any sh- like, yeah, yeah, you had, they like, pulled really it did, all yeah. from YouTube, and yeah, they got real, real possessive. But then also, she so she was involved in a lawsuit with GTA Five. Yeah, for they her, she her likeness. Like yeah, the girl on the cover, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. was it Five? I couldn't. I, I, it, it was one of the GTA games. Yeah, it, it was something that came in. Okay, so the Mean Girls two thousand four. This game, Mean Girls DS, is like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah. So then all this stuff is both her personal life is going down, the GTA four or five scandal is going on. And had to be it had to have been four because five wasn't until I feel like, like yeah, four is twenty eleven, the time period. Uh so that's why Which I'm, go ahead, sorry. It, it's hard to you know, there's so much to talk about yeah, like yeah, conspiracy yeah. theory because she is not on the cover of, of the Mean Girls game for DS. It's just Which the also three plastics. did not come out. So there's also that mm. just that we need to say yeah. because it's like a lot of the art assets for that are clearly like stickers. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just like they, they didn't get to that part yet because mm-hmm. the game didn't ship. Um, and like what's interesting is I remember that GTA, that Grand Theft Auto stuff. It was five. It was five. Mm-hmm. God, man, I'm fucking old. <laughs> well, Skyrim is 10. Yeah. It's 10 years old now. Yeah. Which is insane. And it's also like, man, I know Square Enix is the king of selling you the same fucking game over and over again, but like fucking Skyrim's like nipping on the heels. Skyrim, <laughs> GTA 5, and I remember I watched a whole thing. Somebody posted something on, on Reddit about the three games that all came out like around that time period that, that are, are still, still going on. Still going yeah. on. You haven't seen. That Grand Theft Auto Online, baby, man, that like people latched onto that shit. But I still think it's like the second or third like biggest selling game. Like Minecraft's number one, then GTA five is like number two. I, I'm not positive about this, but GTA may have overcome Minecraft. Uh, like based on some shit that I've heard. It's still big. It's popular. huge. Yeah, it's huge. And every time I hear about it, I have to be honest with you, it sounds like the most Ultima online thing that I could currently play. Probably. Because people do use the terms Wild West. Mm -hmm. They use the term can't do anything because of griefing. And I mean, it's like, Mm. man, if I had a lot of time, (laughs) I could absolutely see myself like being a total shitlord in (laughs) Grand Theft Auto online. I I played GTA online for about an hour. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Because of... You know, I like the game. Yeah, so I got online and I haven't played it. It's it's about what you'd expect, and that's kind of why I didn't play it. Yeah. I liked Grand Theft Auto, but it's like it does come. There there was a point where it's like I do feel like I'm playing the same game over and over again. Yeah, it it is, and but and you go online and you're just someone's going to just immediately try to run you over and mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, I think eventually you can survive it, but you just got to have that will to. To persist. <laughs> Go over that. Yeah. To get over that wall. Of, and that is very much Ultima Online. Because mm-hmm. I remember like doing PvP and stuff. It's like I remember dying constantly yep. for literally months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> literally months where it's like I'd see another. To the point where you see another character. Whether or not they're. Right. Exactly. Ryan. That's why my first character, GM Hiding. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, there's some there's a name on the screen that's not mine. I don't care if it's blue, gray, or red. I'm hiding. Yep. <laughs> because that no. person is probably going to kill me. Exactly. <laughs> that's probably... I'd say that's fair. That's what, it, it's, what it's like Yeah. in GTA Online. And I, if I had more time, I'd probably... Well, GTA needs a Trammel City and a Felucia City. Right. You can go back and forth. We, need, we need Moongate noobs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Ian, we should... I'll get Grand Theft Auto Five, and we should team up and... Um, Totally fucking start griefing people in that game. I don't have I don't have a console that can play it. I don't really have the time to do it either. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Me, it, me neither. Yeah, no. I mean it sounds like it's a lot of fun. That could be great. When we're retired, maybe. Yeah. Okay. It'll still be good. It'll though, definitely right. yeah, still yeah. be good. Well, they're talking about Vice City again. Man. And if they I bring back Vice God, City or a Vice City. new version with mm. Vice City themed oh God, Vice City was my 
favorite See, of all of them. And I think they need to do that because it's like Red Dead Redemption, although I did not play the second game, mm-hmm. be, which I hear, like, I know people loved and I hear is great. It's I great. didn't play it I because play it. it was just kind of like the reason I liked Red Dead, the first one, not the first one, not Red Dead Revolver, but Red Dead Redemption yeah. so mm-hmm. much. I also liked Revolver, but the reason I liked Redemption so much was because it was like, this is a different. This is a a fresh take on Grand Theft Auto. It's not like a modern day thing. The same reason I liked Vice City. Mm-hmm. It's a period piece. Yes, and it's like the reason I bounced. Up, I didn't even try Red Dead Redemption Two was because it's like as much as I liked Red Dead Redemption, it's still Grand Theft Auto on horses. Grand Theft Horse, yeah. But it's just they're doing it again, and it's like I just want something fucking new. I just want so, a new experience. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to be twenty bucks. Then I'll then I'll get it. Dude, play their it. games don't. I mean, it's so. <laughs> I've seen rare. It get, I've seen it get close a few times. Really? But, yeah. yeah. Well, I need to start looking too. I didn't I realize it dipped. Two. I played Red Dead Redemption two, and the thing that got me was it's just so overwhelmingly huge. Yeah. I mean, there's so much hunting and fishing and shooting and. Just the, it's a massive fucking game. Which I love that in the yeah. first Red Dead Redemption, but again, it's like I can't I cannot see myself doing that it's anymore. A lot of time. I wish I could, yeah. but it's yeah, it's a lot of time. It was fun doing that shit. Why well, aren't you spending time with your children? I'm picking flowers. Right. Yeah. My- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. I want to get the the roan horse. I'm picking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the time Henry's in bed, it's like. All right, I'm gonna try to stay up as long as humanly possible to do all the things that I mm-hmm. that I want to do, but then a lot of times that includes spending time with the people that I love, yeah. <laughs> right. that, that aren't Henry. Right. So it's like, okay, here we <laughs> we got an hour to game. <laughs> so I feel like the big thing that that kind of tipped off everything with Mean Girls is just the the subject period of lost media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you guys have any like do you have any memories of like shows or Something that you remember back in the day that suddenly is just lost to time and space. Nothing springs to mind. I mean, I know there was some stuff that people have uncovered or that have brought back out into the light mm-hmm. that I was that I say, oh, I remember that, but nothing specifically in my memory that I that I would like to see. You know, I just nothing nothing springs to mind about it. No. Yeah. If I had longer to think about it, I'm sure I could come up with stuff. Yeah, and that's true. I may as well, but right now, like, I just, I don't know. Two days from now, I'll probably be like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. there's that. But I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Ian, where it's like, there have been plenty of things that I've seen, and it's like that creaky memory door just opens, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, my God, I forgot all about mm-hmm. this shit. And like one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube is like, uh, I think it's called Dave's Archives, and it's like just old commercials and it's like he'll do a video like a compilation where it's like car commercials from 1996 sweet and it's just like watching those um is quite the experience because it's like holy shit like um i we were totally watching those last night they weren't car commercials but i can't remember the name of the fucking cereal but do you there was this commercial of like grandmas in a factory making like a waffle crisp or some shit yeah Yeah. and it's like i had completely forgotten about that commercial but when i was watching it it was like holy shit i hated this commercial so much when i was a kid <laughs> yes oh, i gotta check that out uh it's it's cool i may have gotten the name of the channel wrong okay. but but you'll find it if you'll because like whenever you search for like old commercials like his That'd stuff like normally pops hit. up top yeah okay. um i love that shit and what's wild is like and what always throws me for a loop because we don't have youtube premium is a regular modern commercial will play in the (laughs) middle of it. And it's just like, like I'm like Neo, like when he wakes up in the fucking like pod and it's like looking around and it's like, I guess we're going back in. And then we go right back in the 1996. (laughs) But yeah, it's cool. Uh, Tyler, do you have any that you, there there are two bits. I remember, I think I brought up on the show before because I cannot find wherever they were from. Just can't do it. I remember the first, anime i ever remember like i was i was little like this is an early memory um living in like the first house my parents built like early elementary school like it was pre this house so i had to be in like first grade probably first grade or second grade and i remember i'd seen it come on multiple times 
uh, on on cable. Don't know where it was from. Don't know how I saw it. But it was an anime, and I always happened to catch like the last ten minutes of it. For some reason, I can never catch the whole thing. The last ten minutes is two siblings, a girl who is the the protagonist. Clearly, her brother is the antagonist, and they're in sort of a open space to where they are controlling geometric shapes. Like vector, like like frames, or like no, just, just like flat s- triangles, just flat, and... like squares and triangles okay. and shit. That's all multicolored and building on each other, and they're trying to trap each other and kill each other with it. I remember you mentioning this yeah, a long time I have, ago. I have no clue. I've searched for it and searched for it, trying to figure out what it was. Can't find it. No clue. And in the end, like she beats him and he dies, and the ending is like her crying over. The shapes all around them, uh, kind of building up into this big metropolis, and she's holding her Coffin. her dead brother. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So that, and then I remember it's it's one of those. Do you, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to help people. Fig, I want to help people help you figure yeah. this out. But do you remember? Did you say what channel it would come on? I don't know. I have Damn no it. clue because that would it help was on a cable, lot, right? Okay, but I just remember, and it it looked very much. I remember it had to be an eighties anime because it was very much like it looked sort of Sailor Moon style. Okay. What year what year was it when you were like say in first grade? Uh let's see. So if I was in sixth grade in ninety six, so like ninety two. Okay. Ninety one, ninety two is when All right. I saw it. So cable, ninety two. This might be easier to figure out, honestly, than we think it is, because not a lot there weren't a lot of channels showing anime. In 92. You know what I mean? Like, anime was kind of rare then. So, hopefully, someone can figure this out. Because I want to know it, had to be, like, sci-fi or something, I would think. Yeah, yeah. The other... Because I know I've talked about, you know, weird boners you get as kids, and you don't know why. As kids? (laughs) Well, yeah. Uh, I remember... Because I've talked about the weird boner I got watching Muppet Babies when I was little, about when Miss Piggy Duck Gonzo and a big... (laughs) <laughs> bowl of oatmeal. Right. For some reason, I always got a boner when that was going on. For some reason, I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not, a, not something that carried over into adulthood. <laughs> At all. I don't know why. Can confirm. Like, now now I have a wonderful wife be like, yeah, fucking get some oatmeal out. Let's fucking do this. But I don't know. My, my oatmeal fetish isn't there. I've tried to convince you of oatmeal plays several <laughs> times, and you've rejected every <laughs> offer. <laughs> I remember another movie, sort of in that vein, I remember, like, being disgusted yet aroused by it it's a movie to where they are in it's somebody i feel like they're in like a fast food outfit or something like that and they're in a desert and in the desert was just like this i don't know if it was a food stand or what but it was like a cactus and they walked inside the cactus or they were trapped inside the cactus there were all these buttons and they pressed one and they got covered in this hot, sticky goo that came down from the ceiling yeah. onto them. That's all I remember about the movie. I remember being strangely transfixed by it. It's still in my memory. I don't know why, because it was so I know why, because weird. that's like cum. <laughs> that's I told Melissa. Melissa had never heard of the animated story. animated or no, uh, it live action? Live action. This was cable, too, presumably? Probably. Probably yeah. around the same time period. I don't know why, because I remember thinking... I didn't know what it was, and it was sort of gross, but at the same time, like, I was transfixed by it. Yeah. So I guess I, that, that age, like, I had sticky, sticky goo was uh, not something I cared over an adult, but in that age period, I don't know, something was something about it. But it's hmm. lost meaning that I cannot find. No one else knows what I'm talking about. But they're, so, they're, they're strangely... Vivid memories in my head. Hmm. Peter New presents Desert Adventure. That's probably <laughs> what that was. For kids. <laughs> For that's, kids. Yeah, that's in script. For kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, man, I'm totally going to think of some things a couple days from now, but mm-hmm. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. My problem, and I've had this recently, is like I was trying to think of an actor from the 70s, like a, on like comedy, te- like a comedic television actor from the 70s. Um, who is like large but slightly effeminate, um, and it's like I'm conflating him with at least three. Like it's three people have merged together because I wasn't alive in the '70s. I just watched a lot of like Nick at Night mm-hmm. and like the shit they would play when I got home from school on like I don't know TBS or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, 
and because it's so nebulous, it is. Im- I, I talked to Nikki about it. It was like impossible. I'm trying to figure out who that com- comedian was. Yeah, yeah, we have not been able to figure the it fir- out. There's a guy who pops to mind immediately when you said that. Who was that? He had a lot of bits about salad. A lot of bits about salad. Yeah. Big guy, slightly effeminate. A lot of jokes about. Clearly, I'm not kind of guy who eats salad. This is 70s. And I don't know if he is a stand up too, because I don't know it's, that it was he did stand up. I don't know if it's I don't think he was a stand up guy. I think he was mm-hmm. just like a what can what comes to mind is like his takes. Like um what comes to mind is like when Genie and I Dream of Genie like does something and then like it cuts to a, a person reacting to it mm-hmm. and they're like doing the wide eye like blinky shit. But then I went through IMD. I spent I've spent too much fucking time trying to figure out who this guy is. I, I so like I'm going through the list on IMDb and it's like not him, not him, not him, not him, not him. And I'm like, well, maybe it was Bewitched. So moving on to the Bewitched IMDb mm-hmm. page, not him, not him, not him, not him, not him, not him. And then it's like, okay, now I'm just trying to remember all the shows that I used to watch <laughs> and like one by one go to the IMD page, mm-hmm. IMDb page and scrolling through. And I'm like, okay, was he a regular cast member? Maybe it was just a cameo. And to which point it was like, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> I give John, up. John Panette was who came to mind, but that was, that I'm was definitely look him yeah, up. post-70s. Well, I was alive in the 70s, in 20, I, don't, I was young, so I don't remember. Either. In 2014, he was 50 and he died, so I, I, he probably wasn't a stand-up in no, the 70s. it wasn't him. I recognize John Panette, but it wasn't him. Now that I pull it up. So I don't know. Who was it? I can't remember his name, and I feel bad that I can't remember his name. But then again, I'm not super familiar with his work outside of Hollywood Squares. Um, who was the the Hollywood gay man? Who Bruce was, Valanche. Yeah. Okay. Who was the other one? Because <laughs> that that doesn't ring any bells for me. Oh, is it? The, are you thinking about the guy that threw the glitter? No, no, that's uh, Rip. Rip. Taylor? T- Taylor. Rip Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Yeah, there's two, I'm the two worst. different Hollywood yeah. rips of the same time right. period. Yeah, I'm the worst because it's like, I want to remind everybody, I was like, a lot of this shit, like I was, so I was born in 81. So like, there's a lot of this like early 80s slash late 70s carryover that I like kind of know about mm. because it was like in the, in the sphere. Well, Rip Taylor, I only know about because of Wayne's World 2. Right, yeah, <laughs> and like Jackass as well, right? Wasn't he? Oh, like, was he in Jackass or something like for like one like little cameo? Maybe I'm thinking about something totally different. <laughs> Considering I don't remember two recordings that we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of who who you're talking about. Um, I am thinking of uh, Paul Lind is who I'm thinking okay. of, okay, and it's not Paul Lind. Um, cause I had to do a search and yes, my search was Hollywood squares, gay man. Uh, and he yeah. was the top result. Um, and it's like, it's, it's Char- r- Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> <laughs> That's Liberace. 70s in a gay man. Yeah. The, yeah. You're yeah. right. So, but, but like, it's a whole bunch of the, it's, they're like kind of just, and I don't even know that this man was, was gay. It's just that he is to me for whatever reason, was effeminate and I thought that was I remember that sticks out because that was funny to me uh, as a child because I mean he's a large man like he doesn't look like he would be mm-hmm. um, and which you know in 2021 saying that doesn't probably not a good look <laughs> but you know in the time period it yeah. was just kind of like it. that's just not something your that first, you it was see. your first exposure to something right like that. yeah so it exactly so it head. stuck out yeah. but I cannot identify this man and it's driving me crazy it, I was fine with it until I just brought it up again <laughs> so <laughs> okay so Mean Girls Mean, mean girls. girls so Apparently the the DS collecting scene is not super hot. Is that right? Uh, I don't I don't know anything about the scene. According just to according to the email, the the YouTube videos I watch, kind of trying to learn more about Mean Girls. Uh-huh. Like that's part of the reason it got lost is that there's just not one. It came out five years after the movie. Uh, the DS was at the end of its lifespan. The 3DS was coming out, so not a lot was being produced. It started out coming out in Europe. So, of course, I don't think Mean Girls is going to be as popular in Europe because it was slated for 2009, released in the U.S., which never happened. Yeah, and I think it was originally, I think it was developed because there's like three developers involved. And I think the original developer, I think, was British-based. It might have been the publisher. I can't remember. But it eventually got to like 
Arizona, where they were like working on it in mm-hmm. Arizona. So I think that's like why the Europe angle is is there. Yeah. So I think once once it you know there were once there was a game that no one could find, then people gave a shit. Yeah, because whenever Paramount made the announcement that they were going to release three games based on Pretty in Pink, Clueless, and Mean Girls for the PC, nobody gave a shit. Nope. Right? Nope. And that doing a fucking Clueless and Pretty Pink game in two thousand four. Well, let's and those ended up being yeah. jewel matching games and stuff, right? You know, on the PC, it'd on the be PC. mobile mobile shovelware now. And, well, they, and they ended up becoming well, mobile. Let's yeah. wait. Let's be fair. I mean, a mobile shovelware for sure, but it was shovelware at the time, yeah. Absolutely. and and that's yeah. why people didn't care about it. Which I don't mean to go on another tangent, but it's like. So why do we care about this now? Right. I get why we do, because we wanted to do an episode on Mean Girls, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's just because it's lost. Because you can't, right? you can't have it. You can't have it, so lost. now you care about it. Because yep. Nikki and I were watching probably the same documentary you're talking about, like Raven Simone. Yes, Raven Simone. Yeah. Bob, Bob Dunga is, I think, her YouTube channel. Bob Dunga. This was Girl Games of Lost Media. And there's and her name is Raven it. Simone, not that Raven right. Simone. Right, I know. I had, to, I had to do like a, like, what? This is weird. <laughs> okay, but... Um, there's a there's a part one and there's a part two. Yeah. And then there's also gameplay of Mean Girls on her YouTube channel. Which I watched all of that. I and watched that all the way through. Dude, it's super interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, to anybody listening to this right now, absolutely check that out. Because we're not going to mm-hmm. be able to scratch the fucking yeah. surface. Because it's like... This, she this produced... goes deep and weird in ways you wouldn't expect. Yeah. <laughs> there's hours of content mm-hmm. based on this that she's done. And it's it's good. I mean, it's well produced, well put together, well written. I mean, it's definitely worth your time. Um, but I mean, it it is. It's weird. It's a weird journey, and it's it's it's. Nikki and I were watching it together, and I I looked at Nikki and I was like, man, if th- if this game had released, no one would care about it. No, no, nope. absolutely not. Yep, it would be a it would be a joke like Corey in the house. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Why is there a Mean Girls game without Lindsay Lohan on the cover? I don't know. Why does it look like someone just put stickers on your DS and they're talking? (laughs) (laughs) With really shitty WarioWare minigames. What's fucked up, too, is that it's like this game suffered from bad technical issues in the sense Mm -hmm. of like memory... The memory would fill up, and the game would crash because they were trying to the render game. the burn book in three D. Yes. and it's like the DS is like, nah, "No, man, we can't fucking do that shit." <laughs> uh, yeah, and it would crash out. There was an infinite loop that happened multiple times throughout the game. Yeah, where then this is from Raven Simone's notes on her gameplay. Yeah, that she ended up having obviously had to emulate it. Right. To get it to work mm-hmm. properly and be able to play through it. But as a result of that, the emulation was terrible because uh, this game is super, super stylus dependent. Right. And she couldn't get it to like, there's uh, one mini game where you got to put makeup on them and you got to, and it's like a transparency and you got to color in the transparency with lipstick or blush or eyeshadow or yeah. whatever. And every time she would do it, it would be offset. But if she tried to color in the lines, it would count against her because it was there was emulation issues, right? Mm-hmm. That caused it to not work. By the end of the game, by the end of the playthrough, she had it figured out, you know. But at first, it was counting against her because it, it thought she was coloring outside the lines, and that's literally all it was: just fill in, pick the right color, and fill, fill in, in the lips. fill in the lips, yeah. you know, or the cheeks or whatever. It's wild to me too that like. <laughs> The journey for her to even get the ROM was a long journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by route of Clueless. Yes. Be- because, like, she made a video, like, she made this documentary. I, I, it felt like starting out trying to find Mean Girls. It was. And, and then, she was calling around and getting on LinkedIn and going to all these developers. Like, really doing some fucking investigative yeah. journalism. And, and no I one mean, was emailing her yeah, back. Yeah, 505 is like, it's canceled. We don't know. Yeah, right. they, the they, it was yeah. a voicemail, yeah. that, you know, because people are trying to find this thing, and the guy that they kept calling recorded a message that said, "Sorry, this game was canceled seven years ago, and I don't have any information for you. Quit calling me." But she was reading through that article that came out about that was talking about announcing. So I guess these Kotaku games. really started this was yeah with that shit, and then she no she happened to notice. Oh wait, they were going to release a clueless game on the DS as well. 
which never happened. But she was able to then go down that rabbit hole and... And then she, that first documentary ends with, well, I kind of figured out more about Mean Girls, but she essentially got all of Clueless. Like, she got, she, like, someone who worked on the game ended up sending her pretty much everything for that game. Like, right. I mean, design documents and, like, um, the the ROM itself. Yeah. Because that game was basically what? Because Cher, Cher has that thing in her closet where she's designing her outfits. Right. It's that as a game. <laughs> right, right. And it's, you know, it it didn't release, so it's buggy. And my, my favorite thing is when, like, the 3D models, like, don't render properly <laughs> or something, and it's just, like, a floating head and, like, <laughs> arms. <laughs> there is a There's one of the mini games in Mean Girls where you've got to swipe your thing, your stylus, to do a certain dance move, like, for the Christmas pageant. Yes, I saw that. Oh, my God. I could tell... She was getting frustrated uh-huh. because of the stylus yeah. not working right. Because you have to it, trace shapes, and yes, and it wouldn't, it didn't work right. And so, on the more on the actual Christmas pageant one, she was just it took forever. It took forever, it took forever because it would not stop until you had five stars. Right. And the only thing she could do was the upper mm. swipe or the down swipe. But if it was an X or a Z or an N or an N, <laughs> yeah. forget about it. It wasn't yeah. happening. But. When she did it at the first part, which was only the simple moves, when she was rehearsing, when Regina George had her I know. show her moves, yeah. oh my God, With it the showed head. her dancing, the head stayed yeah. put, and the body was turning and dancing, and it was just this disembodied head floating above this body that was turning, and God, it was fucking hilarious. And then, like, the, the, I love it, because it's like, the when the last one that you're talking about, where they're doing, like, the Jingle Bell Rock, which doesn't have music. It didn't have music! Uh, yeah. I know it wasn't done, but, like, the correspondence that she was having with the, the person who sent it to her, who worked on it, made it imply that it was, like, pretty much almost there. But, man, if it was almost there, like... That, there to me, that, there was a lot There was a lot, right, yeah, for sure. It was almost to, like, you know... Acceptable bullshitness to ship because no one's going to care. Right. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. Which goes back to absolute shovelware situation. I made I made notes about all the mini games. Yes, please. If There's you, like 10 of them, right? Something like that. Yeah. What do we got? And the, the art of the characters is also just bad. It's really it's bad. Generic. Janice um, looks really weird. Jan- well, that's because Janice looks like all the other ones just with Janice Ian's hair. <laughs> Which, yeah. by the way, Janice Ian... Her last name is awesome. <laughs> I agree. Janice um, Wizen Sage Ian. Um, I, uh, the, the fucking way the characters are drawn looks like one of those like Facebook apps where it's like, make yourself a cartoon character. Yeah. They also yeah, just as a sticker, and it's you just, yeah, it's oh my God. <laughs> they also made all of Kenna's little shovelware fashion game she has on my mom's phone. It looks it's just that. like that. Yeah. yeah. They made the comment in the game about how the one girl can tell the weather by feeling her own boobs, right. which is a gag from the movie. Right. But they even drew her boobs weird. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> I didn't but notice her that. Her boobs are no. drawn differently and weird compared to the other girls. <laughs> how like, so? Like their shape? Yeah, the way they, the outline of them. Uh huh. Like one of them's way smaller than the other. I see. Or something. I don't know. Like in Scooby Doo, where you can tell which doors in the hallway yeah, is going to yeah. open. Yeah. yeah. Slightly <laughs> different shape. It's like, I can tell she's going to touch that boob. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mini games and mean girls. First of all, there's all this interaction you go through, and it's like this boiled down version of the script yeah. of mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah. They pull directly from it. They do. And, I was disappointed. I didn't make it all the way to the end. There was never a point at which Regina got hit by a bus, right? No, not that I saw because... That Regina got hit by a bus? Yeah. That happens to her in the movie. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But not in the game, which I thought that's uh, kind no, of the, glaring. The way the game ends is hilarious to me because it was like it ends with like the Jingle Bell Rock where all four of their heads are in their abdomens <laughs> and they're moving around. <laughs> and it's like after that, I swear it's like one of those situations where it's like, there's a fireworks thing. There's yeah, a fireworks mini game uh, at night, that. and you do, which is not in the movie, Mm-mm. and you yeah. do that, and then it's like the game is over. It's that's like one of those. Do. That's how. Okay, so you're a plastic. <laughs> yeah. The mini girl, the mini games in Mean Girls. Uh, you've got the math bubbles, right? Which you add the numbers float up in bubbles, and you're trying to add up to the number that it lists at the top of the screen. Math, mathletics, math, mathletes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, fashion matching 
it, it, where you got to pick the right outfit. There's two people judging what you're picking from the clothes that are available. There's hats, dresses, shoes, uh-huh. whatever. Which that fits. That fits in the Mean Girls canon and, and because like, one of the rules of the plastics is if you get new clothes, they have to approve it. Yes. Right? Yes. And the first the first mini game fits too. I'm I'm working on a theme here. Yeah. Because it's like Lindsay Lohan's character is right. in she's very smart. And she is in the math league. And and uh, mm-hmm. Tina Fey Tina Fey's character, the teacher, she right. wants she wants to get Katie Lindsay Lohan. She knows how smart she she's is. Got potential. She's effortless. She needs to be on our right. mathletes team. And so so far. Tracking. This is this is fitting thematically with the movie. In the okay. fashion matching game, you pick a color, you, and you got to. It says what the two people that are you're basically doing it for approve of, and eventually, what you got to try to do is in a certain amount of time get them to both say yes, you've got the right color, you've got the right mm-hmm. style. So there's that. Uh, there's the one where you have to draw animals. Right now, this one's weird, and it's. N- n- it always is used to diffuse an argument. Like a conflict, yeah. So yeah. like two of the two of the people will be arguing about two of the other people, not not Katie. Right. Mm-hmm. It'll be like Regina and the jock are having an argument. Mm-hmm. And so Katie says, Well, I'm gonna diffuse this argument by, by tracing, tracing a zebra, zebra head. head. <laughs> yeah. And it's and the only thing that ties into the movie there is the fact it's that the Katie Africa was thing. brought up in Africa. Yeah. So, so it's like okay, well, tenuous. Fine, fine. But we're stretching half credit. Uh, then there's air hockey, right? Which is like absolute no. Why is that in there? Other than someone made an air hockey game, pretty much, and it looked awful. It looked horrible because it's using the DS top screen and bottom screen. Yes. So anytime the puck goes over it the center line, disappears. it disappears. <laughs> yeah. And then reappears on the other screen, and it's like uh, the like the. Computer has a clear advantage here because it doesn't need to fucking see nope. where it is, yep. but you do. But she okay, and that changes throughout. It gets more complicated when it re when it resurfaces. When you then they've clearly run out of things to <laughs> do. Hey, let's play air hockey. I hear you've been practicing. <laughs> you know, uh, they make it a little difficult. They've got the coins for points and well, stuff. That's how you, you make fetch up. happen. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Stop trying air to make hockey. fetch happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> then there's the makeup thing I was talking about earlier, where you've got a transparent area on the face, and you got to color in with the right shade of makeup. And if mm-hmm. if you're using the wrong color, the little palette at the top turns red, saying that they don't like this color. So you got to take it off and put on the next color to see if it's the right one. Which mm-hmm. that really, I guess, kind of fits, sort of. But there's makeup. not a scene in the movie uh, where it's like, yeah. yeah, we just assume they're into makeup, right? right. Um, there's the paper folding slash throwing airplanes at people in class. Right. That mo- that mini game mm-hmm. is called is named Trouble. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and well, and the point is, you've got to draw you the DS along lines on paper to make a paper airplane, and then you throw it and try to irritate one of the class members sitting in front of you, which right. then pisses off the teacher. And the more pissed off she gets, the more points you get. Did Did you notice the music in that mini game? I did. I mean, what did I, I... I heard it. I don't know if I noticed what it was. One of my favorite... I told Nikki, because we were watching it, I was like, one of my favorite things to do is listen to songs and try to figure where inspiration was pulled from. Uh, I love doing that. I'm not, like, super knowledgeable about music. I wish I had a bigger, like, mm-hmm. mental catalog of songs because mm-hmm. I could be better at it and do more of it. That song is... We did not pay the rights to one way or another, but we are going to Holy change shit. it You're just enough wrong. so that we are not sued the by Conan O'Brien Blondie. game. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is actually yes because that is what it is. I mean, if you go and <laughs> listen to wrong. it, I mean, it is like because I asked Nikki, I was like, "What is this song?" and she's like, "I don't know." And then I started singing the lyrics over the Kmart version of One Way or Another. <laughs> wow, I didn't even catch that, and I love Blondie, and it's in the movie. Yeah, so it's yeah. like it's clear that they were like, "Well, we want to do this, but fuck, but man." I don't think that. I don't think we could pay Blondie, although I guess Pantene Pro V did or whatever, because that was also in like yep. cosmetic commercials. Well, and they're also not gonna pay for Jingle Bell Rock, so yeah, I feel like that one would be easy, easy just, to get, yeah. maybe, maybe not public, uh, public. It's not public, public domain, domain, right? It's got to be cheaper. It has to be one way or another. So anyway, okay, maybe not though. I don't know. There was never a 
So that's the classroom thing. And like doing the like tracing the paper airplane lines, that's kind of cool. It was neat. And then you like concept. It was flick the stylus yeah. up to throw the plane. You had no control over who it hit. Yeah, but it that didn't does matter suck. if you hit the same person over mm. and over, it would still net you points. But I think I was and I was like, man, you know what would be cool is if you could make other planes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then you're no. getting into a whole nother thing yes, where it's exactly. like you're, you're doing like a boy game at that point. I feel like yeah. where it's like, all right, I want to I want to slightly modify this airplane. Yeah. I'm going to put <laughs> flaps on this right? one so that it goes straight up. Yeah. I've got to go play it. air hockey to unlock a new... Uh, <laughs> to get a blue a schematic? Yep. To make a different paper airplanes. See, now we're on to something. Did, did, you, did either of you go through an airplane, like a paper airplane phase? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like a thing, right? Because I totally did too. And Henry has as well. I could still I, make my favorite one right now. So I absolutely put flaps on. Pl- oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> we should do a paper airplane episode. Yeah. <laughs> um. There's one where you got to clean Katie's room, right? Uh, and you just basically find a bunch of old math tests that are hidden around the room that you don't want the jock guy to find when he comes over because you don't want to don't want him to know that you're really smart, right? Because you know. Like you do. Uh, then there's the fireworks thing, and that was always the one that just covered the parties. Yeah. The fire tap you tap the fireworks shoot up from the bottom screen, and you got to try to tap them on the top screen before they fall, and you get points yeah. for it. And uh, that was if there was a party, that was the game. Do you recall what the name of that mini game was? I do not. Teen drinking. No, just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I thought you were being serious, and it would not surprise me. Well, this game is just all the bad lessons and none of the redeeming endings, since it's all just let other people tell you tell you how to be pretty and, and it <laughs> be ends, dumb for boys. It end, end. Yeah, it ends at the height of her being plastic, essentially. <laughs> yeah, right, with the jingle bell rock thing. Um, <laughs> pretty, and then there's the there's the dance one that we talked about already, right? Uh, they throw dance moves at you. You've got to swipe your stylus in the arrow direction that the that the little icon shows. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do it, you miss. And it, then they, when she dances, her head floats and her body moves. And then it's <laughs> like just Krang. from that point. They look like four Krangs up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From from that point, I would like to see cr- four Krangs doing Jingle Bell. <laughs> Dude, I would play. Uh, Let's dance, just dance. What's the name of that dance, franchise dance, that I've never played? Dance. Yeah, I would love oh, to the see girl, it. the girls love that. I would yeah. love to see a TMNT <laughs> version of Just Dance. I would watch Mean Girls, but with the four turtles instead of the plastics. Oh my <laughs> god, it's so good! All right, let's go through it. Uh, Leo is definitely Rachel McAdams' yep. character. Yep. Um, Katie's got to be Donatello then. Katie's got to be Donatello. One. She's smart. Um, I guess. Uh, Raphael would be, I can't remember her first name, but her last name is Wiener, and her father invented the toaster strudel. Yes. Um, Gretchen. Gretchen, Gretchen Wieners. Wieners. Because she does have animosity towards yep. Rachel McAdams' character. And then the one that tells the weather from her boobs, That's totally her. Michelangelo. Yep. They copied fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It worked too perfectly. Amanda, Se- <laughs> Amanda Seyfried's character, Karen. Right, yeah. Um, Shredder could be Mrs. Norsbury. Norbury. I don't know, man. Or She's... should it be? Or should Janice Ian? Janice Shredder. is Shredder. Janice yeah. is Shredder. <laughs> uh, that would make Damien Crank then, I guess. Why did he? <laughs> I wasn't thinking Shredder. Who's their? Who's their? Who's Splinter. Their... Splinter. Who would be Splinter? Well, Splinter is not the mentor well, of Tina Fey is the one who's trying to. So I Tina think Fey Amy be... Poehler would be Splinter because she is. <laughs> Rachel McAdams character's mom. I so. refer to that character all the time. Uh, yeah, really? Yeah, oh God. Because she's the got cool the mom. She's Yeah, she's got the drinks. She's like, we don't have, these are non-alcoholic, but if you want some, you can have some. Right. I don't mind if you I'd stay rather here. you drink here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, uh, Melissa was telling me a story the other day. I had no idea about that um, when she was in youth group at her, at her, at her old church, uh, that everyone was, about to graduate middle school or maybe like they were coming back from a mission trip and the pastor's mother wanted to organize a a drinking party for the youth group secretly like so, a like a like a teen drinking party yeah yeah just for the youth group once they got back from church camp. like alcohol That's yeah she went and bought two kegs 
Well, while the, like while, the, kegs? while the preacher was for, away for, middle for, schoolers? for like eight kids <laughs> <laughs> to Whoa. come over. Hey, kids, come here. Hail Satan. Because <laughs> Melissa, Melissa was like 15, 15 or 16, whenever this was going on. So she was like a junior in high school. And that's why they went to, to Mission Fuge or something like that. They were coming back, and the that's preacher's weird. wife was... It's really weird. Hey, kids, uh, drink two kegs, and if you feel like it, take your shirts off. <laughs> I mean, I know it gets kind of hot down here <laughs> in the church basement. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> And like that would be a fast travel destination in the Tadpog video game. <laughs> yes, it Church would. Basement. Church basement. And Melissa yeah. thought it was it was that it was fucked up. I mean, it, it is weird. Like for the preacher's wife, yeah, doing it all really these behind, very, behind her back, very fucked. So up. she told her dad. She was like, "I heard this is going on." And the preacher went down and found the two kegs in his basement. <laughs> And like the preacher's wife went before the church and was like, "I was, and also I've found, sinned. I was planning a drinking party for the kids." Oh my god! Ne- next to the kegs, found three chained up children <laughs> <laughs> that had been missing for like two weeks, but they were drunk, so they didn't mind. They didn't care. But the whole, the whole, the the woman and the, I mean, the preacher died of died of cancer like a few years later, and the wife was. It's a whole really, really weird fucking situation. Oh, yeah, situation. it sounds... Like, Melissa could tell tell it on a Patreon episode or something, because it's Let's a do that. really weird, because mm-hmm. we were both friends with the son, who is our age, but he's also really strange and fucked up. Yeah. So, he's somebody who well, I was friends with He's probably drunk him. his whole childhood. <laughs> and, and his adulthood, too, <laughs> now. But I remember I was friends with him, like, my freshman year of high school, because we had, like, gym together. Uh, and he would call me so much every single day to the point like my dad would answer the phone and be like, quit it, <laughs> go away. <laughs> were you friends? I mean, we were friends, but yeah, like I, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I hated talking to my girlfriend at the time for hours on the well, phone. Well, we all know you don't like talking on the phone. I mean, yeah. And this, that's... and this dude would call me. Yeah. 20 times a day to talk about absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I'm not fucking answering the phone. Like, I like him. On the weekend, I'll go over there and we'll hang out, but I'm not going to talk on the phone for like hours. And like, yeah. when I told Melissa, like, hey, he did the same thing to me. He would just call everybody all day long. Stop tying up the phone line. I'm trying to play <laughs> Diablo 2. Come on, man. <laughs> the picture um, where we're at uh, a, a not to be named person's. No, it's not. Yeah. I, was it? Or no, it was your. It was your wedding where everyone's smoking, but me standing over by the barn, just kind of looking forlorn. That, that was yes. <laughs> yeah. I have that photograph. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was sort of like that because I remember I went over to his house once to stay the night, and when we got up the next morning, he wanted to go like walk in the woods. I was like, okay, that's fine. So we go walk in the woods, and he suddenly like starts pulling out cigarettes. And he's like, come on, let's smoke. I want to smoke in the woods. So wait, when was this? Put the put like a time I was frame a, on this. A freshman in high okay, school. Okay, okay. So if you saw how how like I was just like a fish out of water yeah. with all my friends smoking, you can only imagine how as, it was my freshman year of adults. high school. <laughs> right. Yeah. I wanted to tie that together because I was kind of confused for a yeah, minute. Yeah, okay. I remember I like freaked out and went and called uh, my mom oh and like God. he chased me you, with cigarettes it was well, really yeah, weird yeah because you were about to narc on him because <laughs> i was like I'm, I'm just gonna go home no let's smoke cigarettes oh god no <laughs> <laughs> i remember like my mom came to get me and i was trying to avoid him because it was really weird he like yeah. chased the car when my mom was driving me away never went over there ever again no i think i really yeah. talked to him no i could point. totally be really as a parent if a kid was chasing my car i would probably say let's not hang out with yeah. that one anymore <laughs> so yeah that was a that was a weird it was a weird time it sounds like it and now you're an avid smoker. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't get, Always stop me from suckling on bun, Satan's dark, smoky teeth. Bumming nice. cigarettes from me all the time. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, it's, I guess I've probably not smoked in 10 years. I don't know what the actual day. I stopped counting. It's been a while. But every time you come over and you light a smoke, it smells really good. It does smell really good. I need to quit. I'm, I was, I'm working on it still, but. That's not me trying to guilt you. That's just a, that's no, just a fucking no, no. fact. I'm just you I like, think that a hundred times a day. Yeah. I really need to fucking quit smoking. Yeah, Casey's on that train too, trying to quit, and then something stressful happens, or he gets bored enough. And I was about to say, again. boredom's a lot of it because I remember playing Counter Strike at the time when I smoked, and like um, dying in Counter Strike. When you die, you got to wait till the end of the match, and it's like I remember like after I'd quit. 
playing, I quit smoking. I remember playing Counter Strike for like the first time, dying and being like, just like tapping my Looking desk for, that, for my that muscle memory of, of getting smokes, your smokes. And it's like, yeah. oh no, I just have to sit here. That's how Melissa was with driving. Like yeah. she didn't know what to do with her other arm while she was driving, yeah. like oh, hanging I out rem- the window. Like I, re- I remember that shit too. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my worst is driving is smoking while driving. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tanya, Tanya does it too, and we'll we'll get in the car and we'll be almost home from like wherever we went. Like we went to Walmart, whatever. We'll be almost home, like literally a few blocks from home, and she'll light up, and I'm like, we're almost home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it, I guess, but fuck. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I, you're gonna. Yeah. S- shotgun it before we get out of uh-huh. the car and then you're gonna fucking light up again well you saying that like di- like smoking right before something is about to happen like i know i haven't been in a restaurant i haven't eaten in a restaurant in a year and a half mm-hmm. but i mean that was like another instance of well we're waiting and it's like i guess we'll smoke a cigarette because we're waiting on food and yep yeah that's a surefire way of making the food appear is to light a cigarette <laughs> speaking of <laughs> i've got to go to the bathroom can we yeah. pause yeah let's take a break Sorry. Yeah, you're fine. All right, we're back. We're back. Thank you. Needed that old man relief. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying real hard. I'm going to start, I'm gonna start calling peeing that from now on. Yeah. <laughs> old man relief. I had to pee real bad for like the last hour, so <laughs> I did my best. I get that. I get that. Yeah, Trust you me. get it. I get it. I've got implants for it. I get it. Right, right. <laughs> Are those still active? Like, is that still doing, is that still working it for is. you? It is. I probably need to get it adjusted because, like, I've had a few, I've had a few real bad days yeah, recently. That's so. not good. Well, we were talking about the mini games, and all I had left to say about that was that they just recycle them at that point yeah. for the rest of the game, and they get harder. Some of them were kind of neat. I mean, they weren't the worst. I think this would make an okay mobile game. Yeah, it, it looks would. like it. I think the only part I thought was sort of interesting and different was that you have to turn on certain segments, turn your DS vertically like yeah. a book. Yeah, and they did. They they apparently did that on purpose to mimic the burn book. But it is. Which, I mean, I can get. I can appreciate that. I get that's that. a nice. That's a nice little detail well, without th- any real function. I think <laughs> you play most of the game in the with it held sideways because it's like rectangular. The, all of the art for the people mm-hmm. talking back and forth to one right. another is rectangular. And then when you want to play a mini game, you switch it to the normal mode so that you can use the top and bottom screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like the dialogue stuff, which is, yeah. that's nicer <laughs> because all of that dialogue stuff is the story part. Yeah. So it makes sense that that would be like in, I think they I think they literally called it book mode yeah. for the DS. Um, something that I thought was um, interesting about it was the fact that they realized that the burn book was really important and like throughout the game, you um, find lore and, and that, rumors. And rumors. Yeah. They, they literally yeah. call them rumors. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, and you can tell it's British because of the spelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so the rumors you find. <laughs> Put makeup on your boat race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rumors that you find in the game go into the burn book. So it's like, I thought that was neat, but all the room, most of the rumors in the fucking burn book are like shit you know from the movie and it's like i get they're trying to tie it in but at the same time it's like this is boring i mean (laughs) totally irrelevant (laughs) right i mean your mission collect three rumors about regina george to put in the book and they'd be gray when you catch it they'd be in color right like an icon like a bracelet or a one of the Protein bars, uh-huh. that Katie the Swedish protein eating. bars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's that mini game. Is it a carb? Where you have to help Regina identify what carbs are. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Butter, yeah. Butter's a carb. Butter's a carb. It. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been like they could have done like they really, honestly, could have done more mini games that tied directly to the movie. Because you saying that, Tyler, made me think of like, do you remember the meta mini, the meta game in Final Fantasy X, where you're trying to like learn the the language uh oh the abed yeah thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. you could have done that shit with swedish essentially <laughs> where it's like yeah, as you as you progress through the game you learn learn swedish, swedish and then like <laughs> but whatever i guess that you don't want to help regina george so 
<laughs> another, if you liked Mean Girls, I I would also recommend another movie that that reminds me of Mean Girls is Easy A with Emma Stone. Easy A is a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. It definitely has Mean Girl vibes. Yeah, for sure. I think it's very good. Yeah, totally. Now I don't think that. So based on these documentaries that Raven Simone did, we've she's uncovered like. Everything about Clueless and Mean Girls, it seems like, right? Right. What about Pretty and Pink? Yep. Uh, I, thank I, you. Pretty and Pink, you're right. I'm I about didn't get candle. far enough through. I didn't get to watch both parts because each part is like an hour and a half long. The second part is shorter. Is it shorter? Thankfully, okay, okay. But, and I only say thankfully because I was like, holy shit, I got to get like get through this. I was watching yeah. this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know how we're going to make this. But the, the second one's like 30 minutes or I think so. they wrote it off in the sense of... Pretty in Pink was even less in demand. Oh yeah, most definitely. There's not. Yeah, a lot. I mean, right. they're, they're twenty they're definitely... years out from Pretty in Pink at this point, yeah. and we're and, already talking about movies that are you know eight or nine years old that nobody is really thinking about a video game. No for young girls now. are playing Nintendo Dogs and then Pretty in Pink. Right. So right. So I think they probably left that bit out because but that would be interesting to know you press Molly Ringwald's tits together and put lipstick in the middle <laughs> so she can put them on. <laughs> that's pretty good that's actually like, a good one yeah I like that you can tell she's gonna touch them because they're drawn differently <laughs> <laughs> there is I mean I meant to say this about like, you have to tap A so I mean the SFS doesn't get a boner while she's doing it <laughs> uh, don't get the bull's horns whatever you <laughs> <Don't> do <laughs> I think that would pull be a the good kids' game. glued butt cheeks apart. <laughs> oh, that's the goatsy mini game. <laughs> there so is. I'm saying I want a Breakfast Club <laughs> DS game. Yes, that would be way better than a Pretty in Pink. I, I want. Game, I think. I want. Ali Sheedy, you have to do the stylist to scratch the dandruff out of Ali Sheedy's head. Dude, what if it's Sweet in style and you got to recruit them all? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to form the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Pick the up. janitor's closet gets more elaborate as you recruit more <laughs> Breakfast Club members. Uh, pick up all the tampons. <laughs> she out of her purse. Man, now I gotta watch. Now I gotta rewatch Breakfast Club. It's been a minute. I've seen that one a bunch of times. Oh but, yeah, I loved it yeah. in high school. I had posters in my room, and yeah. I fucking loved that movie. My first serious girlfriend and I got together after I got back from a middle school trip to Six Flags, and I I went to a different school. I went to Paducah Middle, but most of my friends were still at St. Mary. Yeah. And I went, and my best friend who lived real close to me, his name was John as well. He was the drummer for my band. Right. I was talking about. Um, I got back from my trip and then he was having a big party because they they got out of school at the same time we did. And he was having a big sleepover and there was girls over there and stuff. And we all sat around and watched the Breakfast Mm -hmm. Club and me and my first girlfriend had been kind of talking, you know, and then we actually finally got together uh, because of that movie. Yeah. You know, because we were super hormonal. And right. Nothing, sure. Nothing better for some hormonal teenagers than the fucking Breakfast Club. I, I've, mean, I've, I've, I invited a girl over. That's why I we still fooled around it. post-Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> it gets, <laughs> it right. gets you when you're a teenager, and it sticks with you. I mean, so now I see that movie, and I still think about that time. Uh-huh, that's sure. why I still love it so yeah. much, you know. I saw it as a kid, so it didn't hit the same way. Like, yeah, a lot of those yeah. John Hughes movies I saw, like, those were designed at for eight, the, kind of my deal. age at mm-hmm. the time yeah, that they sure. came out. Like that super young, like young teenager, super hormonal uh-huh. shit. That was designed for that. For me, it was, this is what I have to look forward to. Yeah. Which yeah. was very bizarre because it was not like <laughs> it that. It wasn't like that, right. <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. Movie magic and the fact that I went to school, high school in the late 90s. Right, <laughs> right, right. Things had changed. Exactly. But yeah, I, I, all those movies still stick with me because of how old I was when they came out. And, yeah. And, and I really, I still love them all, particularly The Breakfast Club. Plus, though, I am a huge fan of 80s music. And, you know, all those movies are yeah. just, he, John Hughes had a great way of picking music for the soundtrack. For sure. Uh, he And he would go with like, some of the stuff was like obscure European bands that at the time hadn't gotten a whole lot of mm-hmm. traction, but I was into music, so I knew some of it. Yeah, and then they would become mainstream, and so that was you're hearing it on the radio now and everything. You know, just so many good songs 
he knew that the music was a huge part of it. Yeah. And I uh, wove it into his story so well that I, I think of specific scenes from movies when I hear those songs mm. now. Yeah. You know, just because they were so like woven in there, so perfect for that particular moment in the movie. He, he would, he would really like Ready Player Two. I gotta really read it. I've I've got the book. It sits right by my chair, and I haven't picked yeah, it up to I think read you would it. You really like it. I'm going to. It's John Hughes. The first third of it is John Hughes heavy. Oh shit. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Ian, could you do me a favor? Yes. Don't you forget about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that man. was the that was the perfect response. Yeah, kudos, yeah. <laughs> and every I know what you're all getting for Christmas this year. It's a carton of cigarettes. Like, <laughs> Smoke, Smoke up, up, Johnny. Uh, you I, grab our lapels. Give us a Christmas present. I uh, was watching Pitch Perfect the other day, which is also it's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, they the guy the love interest for uh. Anna Kendrick's character, he, he's the he's in the other, you know, because apparently in right, this college they've got like six acapella groups. And they're all clubs, rivals. And they're course, all rivals. Right. Uh, he he forces her to watch The Breakfast Club and she's like resistant to it because she's not a movie person. And I'm like, bitch, you need to sit down and watch The Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> You're past due for that. There is one thing I want to mention about um, the documentary um, that Raven did that we've been talking about that I think is really, really neat is the first part of that documentary ends on her knowing pretty much everything about Clueless, having the file to play and everything like that, and then also being like, well, we've kind of discovered some things about Mean Girls, but not all of it. And then because of that first video about Clueless, it got kind of big, and then people started getting in touch with her, mm -hmm. and then she was able to actually make traction on Mean Girls to the point where she got, and it gets even more, it gets mm -hmm. better than that. She got a ROM from someone who worked on the game, played that ROM, and then encountered a game-breaking glitch, mm -hmm. and then that video, it's like kind of like, well, this is as far as we can go. This is how legit she is. She reaches out to a programmer that she knows to and says, it. can you fix this? Yeah. And the guy is like, it's COVID. No. <laughs> and it kind of ends there. Right. And then I don't know how it worked out, but it worked out. She because got through the someone, whole thing. Someone. Well, she put this in. I've got it written down the in, notes, the, in her notes, in her notes of the playthrough and not so much in the video. Uh, let's see here. The game was okay. This is a full playthrough. This is a segment we like to call Ian, Ian reads, reads from the comments from the YouTube video <laughs> yeah. of the playthrough. Now read all of them. This is the full playthrough <laughs> of the Lost Mean Girls game for Nintendo DS, and all of this would not be possible without the help of the LM community and programmer Tommy Shadow. And I think that's the person you're referring that, to. That she she didn't name him as far as I know in the video, but it, it probably it probably that's is. it right. Uh, this game was full of so many bugs and required several restarts, a patch, and a lot of debugging and patience, but we managed to pull through. After all this, I can tell that the game required a lot of bug testing and wasn't at all ready for release, but it was ultimately and it was ultimately pulled from release. Uh, all things considered, I managed to finish the game to 97%, with the other 3% being a few more hidden stars. Which were dumb. Yeah. Like you'd be in a conversation with somebody and you're supposed to find these stars and basically By tapping only, around. You tap around until one shows up in the Gee. room. Oh, it was awful. You could just tell it was awful and yep. it, you can't see where she's tapping until the star shows up, but that's what it was. Um Three, uh, three or four rumors that were unlocked with higher scores, which is hard to get because of the limitations. She was getting lower scores on right. some of the mini games because mm -hmm. of the it wasn't working Styles right. Issues, and yeah. for the and sorry to interrupt, but for I, I want to. There's even more legitimacy to her process, and that is that she also flashed these games to an R4 and played on an actual DS. I yep. at least know she did for Clueless. Yep. So I mean, it's like because she wanted to make sure that they would run on yeah. mm -hmm. on actual hardware. Uh, in order to complete or original the, hardware, I mean, she says in order to complete the game, I had to reset it a handful of times and replay multiple different missions, which is just that's just torture. Uh, so the footage was all spliced together to be more coherent. Uh, there was the initial infinite loop error that occurred around 14 minutes into the game after completing the first minigame. Right. 
Uh, after patching that and passing this bug, the infinite loop would randomly be present in other mini games. Oh God, I didn't know that. <laughs> it became an issue of the game using too much memory, and the only way to get past this was to reset the game and start again from the most recent save point. But this issue came up on several different occasions, and when it did, sometimes the autosave didn't work, which meant certain missions had to be replayed over and over, which I just can't even. Damn. Uh, after the game was again, that goes again towards her dedication to this. Yeah, project. no shit. I mean, no shit. I would I mean, have yeah. lost my wood way earlier. Than, you know <laughs> what I mean? yeah. uh, after the game was patched, it could only be played on a no dollar GBA. Oh, see, I didn't know that. So she did have to emulate. Right. Yeah, and would not run in Desmume for other. Em- or other emulators, so I was unable to rotate the screen during the prompts, which made stuff difficult. Sure, yeah. So even then, you, she couldn't rotate the screen. Yeah. Uh, there was no. There was a point in the game after visiting Regina's house where the chapter repeats itself and the game crashes. After the game crashes, the save progress went from 45% to zero. Zero. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, did you say zero percent? Zero percent. This happened three times oh until God. there was no crash on the fourth attempt. Jesus. Wow. Chapters completing and repeating, resulting in the game crashing. Normally, after completing a mission, the player will see a notification showing them that this has been completed. But as I ventured further into the game, this notification would be delayed, and I'd find myself searching empty areas of the map until the chapter completion prompt showed up. Uh, glitch sprites and dialogue boxes... Certain mini games required the stylus, Jingle Bell Rock Dance mini games specifically, and only worked efficiently on the DS. Through the use of an emulator, using the mouse or a tablet stylus for the mini game yielded poor results. Sure. Uh, yada yada yada. Character sprites appeared in locations of the map where they shouldn't have been, i.e., Characters like Janice and Kevin frequently were found in the background of different locations, <laughs> but you couldn't. Interact that makes with sense, them. though. It kind of does. <laughs> uh, there's little to no background music, and when there is, it plays a very choppy on the emulators. This was tested on a DS, and the audio quality was slightly improved. Because uh, it's real bad in the capture. The, oh, it's the awful. music is like it's so peaking, bad. and it's, yeah, crackling. All the sound effects are terrible. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you'd receive a game over even if you got a high score, and congratulations if you got a low score, and at times the minigames displayed upside down. (laughs) Uh, There's a weird flashing during the fireworks minigame towards the end. Um, She says, why did they make Janice even meaner in this game, LOL? (laughs) But that that was all of her notes um, about the actual playthrough. So... Very dedicated. I should have read the notes. There's a lot of good information in yeah, there. Yeah, she put a lot of real energy oh, into making this happen. Absolutely. So kudos to her. Yeah, no, it's great. Everybody listening should check it yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's really It's really interesting, interesting. Yep. yeah. They, it, she does get into the weeds quite a bit on the Clueless game. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like my only criticism mm-hmm. is like even I, who was interested in it, was like, I remember when she was started going through it, I was like, please don't go through all of it. Right. But I'm also not a lost media guy. I think it's neat, but it was also like, I'm here for mean girls. So, like, I was here with that attitude, you know (laughs) what I mean? So, it's like, I don't know. But I do think it's all very cool. And I think it's, I mean, she did a lot of work. No, from a lost media standpoint, like, it's amazing what she did. Yeah. It would would not exist without her. Well, it's funny. Yeah, because you guys mentioned earlier, this was just sort of an aside. Yep. We ended up down the same rabbit hole, but she did all the work. Yeah, right? I mean, no, it was just, all we had to do was watch what she had done yeah. to be able to bring that out to the listeners of this show. Sure, yeah. If just because unaware. it's really cool that this just happened to be it's, something that someone put a shitload mm-hmm. of energy into. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Tyler, do you have uh, any beards or glasses for this one? We didn't actually play it or anything, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I give... Um, Merlin's beard and uh, what's an what's an amazing pair of glasses? Benjamin Franklin's bifocals to <laughs> to Raven Simone for all of her work. The first uh, bifocals of any time. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin's. I like it. Uh, long shot. I don't have any. But does anybody here have any achievements for this game? No, I don't think I'm qualified to give any. Yeah, no. 
I've only got one that I just came up with. Mm -hmm. On Wednesdays, we wear pink, and you got to play this game on a pink DS. Oh, there you go. That's it. I'm done. That's good. That's so good. (laughs) Well, let's take a... You got some more questions, though? I do. I have a couple questions questions, uh, that came in from one. Ross Rachel Green from Across the Pond. Um, If you guys would like to take that. Mm -hmm. Sure. good. Yes. All right. This is entitled Witty Quiz Title. Ross begins, This week has been fine. There's been no house fires, no one has died, nothing terribly exciting has happened at all. That's not to say it's bad, but it doesn't make for exciting quiz intros. I see I see what you're saying. You have not been milked, Ross. I get it. I see what you're <laughs> writing between the lines. Nothing exciting has happened this week. You're good at that. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't yeah. pick up on that subtext mm. at all. I registered a domain for it and everything, and he hasn't yeah. been milked yet. God, Ross. <laughs> Come on. We put a lot of effort into this, Ross. Just get milked. <laughs> Please. Go do it. Go, yeah, what's wrong with you? Go do it. Let's start a, a move on petition to get Ross milked. <laughs> yeah, do we do we need a GoFundMe? Is money an issue? <laughs> uh, Ross continues, I will pose a f- uh, philosophical question we have had at work recently. Someone offers to pay you $500 a day to kick you in the balls. Not a gentle tap but they aren't trying to go for a 50-yard punt. There's a big discrepancy between Mm -hmm. those two. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can't run away. You can't have your balls removed. They won't pop and be replaced by plastic ones. Do you do it? Are they are they, are they kicking you in the nuts every day, or is it a one time thing and then you get five hundred dollars? Every day you day? get five hundred dollars. Yeah. No, 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 no. I get you get five hundred dollars every day. Do you get kicked in the balls I think every you day? Get that's kicked what I thought. In the balls it was. every day, yeah. and for for that you get five hundred dollars. Then that's a no. That's way too much fucking trauma. Yeah, I'm with you. No, you'd way. probably get used to it, but I mean, Mm-mm. kick me in the jimmies. <laughs> do uh, it again feels good but he's also indicating that it wouldn't be enough to like permanently damage your balls then you must have magical balls because if you're getting kicked in the balls every day you're going to have per- you're, it would definitely you're, be you're, a you're gonna have to be removed no it would ru- it would ruin your life just knowing that it was coming every single day like even for five hundred dollars like so it's not enough money is what we're saying or is it that it's just too much physical trauma. What's what's your what's your dollar amount? Is there a dollar amount? How much per day? And let's let's pretend it's a com, like a binding contract where it's like uh, you can't be like a million dollars a day and then I quit on Friday. Right. It's like a, this is a you are until the day you die mm-hmm. you're kicked Which in the balls. Which will probably be from insanity after having had your balls kicked so yeah, many. Yeah, I times. would imagine like that the long term effects of that would be terrible. Like I can't. I mean, five hundred dollars a day is a lot of fucking money. It ain't enough. You're but right. It's not enough. But it ain't yeah. enough. I don't think I would do it. Yeah, I don't think I would either. Not, if there's a dollar, million, a million dollars a day. Yeah, a million. And let's just throw that out there. A million dollars a day. If we could put a time limit on it, let's say you get X amount of dollars a day to have this done for two months. All right, and you get free nights and weekends too. Yeah. On this on this plan that yeah. we're making. Then I mean I could probably, but if, like I'm, if I'm like an 80 year old man just getting kicked the balls every day, like, I mean at that I mean, point the nerve damage you're not gonna feel it. Yeah. There is gonna become a point where it's like this is literally just free money. Yeah, and someone gets to kick me in my dead testicles. Right. Well, I'm basing this entirely off a probably not scientifically accurate book. I, but, I was uh, God, I was hoping you were gonna say TikTok. <laughs> uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. That trilogy. Uh huh. Um, Elizabeth Salanders has a brother who has that uh, condition where they cannot feel pain. Mm. Okay. So he is after her trying to kill her and like she grabs a nail gun and like shoots the nails through his feet to staple him to the, you know, nail him to the floor and shit like that. And he, you know, he can just go through it. But at one point she does get like a bat or something and he kicks him in the balls gets in the balls with it and he still like doubles over so like he can't feel pain but there is like a, a physiological reaction. reaction your body has to it I wonder if that would have worked on francis and deadpool yeah i don't know yeah, that same good, condition that's, that's a good question <laughs> yeah 
I don't know. I don't uh, think I would do it. I just I'm too pain averse. It's so outlandish <laughs> yeah, that it it's is. also kind of like no one's gonna give me a million it's tough dollars to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're if you're up for it, hit me up. We'll make a deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys ready for uh, the quiz? Ross says so. Game quiz or something. Oh, and he also says I'm sorry. Everyone we have asked have agreed that it's just not worth it. Okay, and I agree. Good. It's not yeah, worth $500 yeah. a day. Nope. You got to up that. You got to yeah. up that. Yeah. You got to adjust for cost of living at least. Come on. Yeah, man. flat yes. $500. And yeah. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine 20 years from now being mm-hmm. like $500 doesn't even fill my gas tank? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here getting kicked in the balls for fucking three quarters <laughs> of a tank of gas. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Or electro fuel, whatever the fuck we're using yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you guys like to begin the quiz? Yes. Fuck yeah. Question one. This game stars a frozen super soldier, an archer, a billionaire, and an android. Has to be the, the Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. Yep. I think it's Captain America and the Avengers. I think you're right. Okay. Locking it in? Yeah, sure. It is Captain America and the Avengers. Nice. Next question. This game starred the mascot for a popular soft drink. Tyler, this is all you, bud. Oh, uh, that's uh, Cool Spot. Cool Spot, mm-hmm. I yeah. agree. Locking it in. It is Cool Spot. Well done. Next question. In this game, the mad scientist Dr. Tongue has created a wide variety of monsters within the bowels of his castle and has unleashed them on nearby suburban areas. Um, this is either... Um, Zombies Ate My Neighbors mm-hmm. or Ghoul Patrol? I think it's Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Yeah. I think it's the first one. Yeah. We're good with that? Sure. Yeah. All right. Logging it in. It is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Nice. Well done. Next question. In the English language version of the game, an American girl named Josephine, Joe, goes to Japan to attend a summer school. Her personal trainer, Osaki Bob Yoritomo, asks her to fight monsters on the way to school. Is this some kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer thing? I think this is Kendo Rage. Oh. But I'm not positive. I have no idea whatsoever. Uh, the only reason I'm get this is a total guess, but I've looked into it. I haven't played it yet, but um, recently on the Discord, Chris Murray was like, we should scoop up some like speed run, speed runs that like haven't been done. And it's like, so I was filtering on speedruns.com, Super Nintendo games filtering by the ones with the least number of entries. And Kendo Rage was the only one near the bottom that looked remotely interesting. Um, and it had, I don't know, man, it had like an anime style to I say, it yeah, for sure. I'm Go for it. 100%. I got no other guess. Yep. I think there's another one that, that like when I was watching a video, someone said it was, it reminded them of, of another game. Uh, something for Yaris, Yavis for, I don't know. So it might be that. Mm. Kendo Rage? I'm down. Kendo Rage. Kendo Rage. Locking yeah. it in. It's Kendo Rage. Nice. Good get, job. Get fucked, Ross. Great. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, motherfucker. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Next question. Some fries, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Eat pies, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, you saying fries reminded me of the commercials that Nikki and I were watching last night from 1996. Mm. And do you guys remember when Wendy's was doing like the country fresh chicken sandwich from France? And uh, fucking Dave Thomas was riding a bicycle talking in yes. French to everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Oh, boy. <laughs> God. I also, they're getting shit. ready to change their fryer at recipe at Wendy's. I think they might have already done it. Oh, yeah? Uh, I know like nationwide they haven't, but we had Wendy's yesterday and I was like, these fries fucking taste different to me. Are they good? Uh, I like the old ones okay. better. But they weren't bad. And I don't know. It could have been they just changed the fucking oil at it that day, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's just like <laughs> psychologically. Well, I remember I when they added these fries that we know it still yeah. have little bits of bits of skin on them, potato skin and they look the same. Okay. To me. They just I think these are gonna be like a complete departure from oh, okay. so maybe you just got fresh grease fries. Then yeah, it sounds like if they're gonna be completely different. Oh, also just hamburgers has crinkle fries. Yeah, again. right. Yeah, thank you. That's thank for, God. super important yeah. news. There's, those were <laughs> terrible. What they the had. The ones they had. I went yeah. I didn't hate those, but I went back I went there the other day, picked up some dinner and got home and pulled my fries out of the bag and it's crinkle fries. Yep. So yeah, I was super pumped. I know what I'm gonna have for lunch today. Yay. Yeah. 
I, I hear. I think they don't have to do waffle fries anymore. They do. They do. I bought waffle fries too. Oh, thank you. I bought you. those for her because she likes those better. Nikki said that when she last time she went to the drive thru it was crossed off. She's like, I don't know if it's temporary or permanent. But then we were like, well, they brought the crinkle cut fries back, mm -hmm. so they might have nixed the they, waffle. Well, fries. they had a. I think they had a seasoned fry that they just stopped oh, having. Okay, I didn't try that. They changed the crinkle fry to just regular fries, uh -huh. and then but the waffle fries have always been there. Okay, and it's like one size only. I've never yes. had them. They're and right. that's what made me sad because I was like, I wanted to try them. Yeah, they're good. I like to give them a shot. Cut, anyway, crinkle cut back, awesome. back in business. I love it. Continue. There was some it. cheap ass Cisco fries they switched to. Yeah. Like you, uh, yeah. Ugh. Next question. This game features several boss characters, including Hawkeye Hank Hatfield, Chief Scalpum, and Sir Richard Rose. These are boss characters. I feel like we played something like this. Uh, it kind of, kind of has combat tribes vibes because you do yes, fight the the Native American mm -hmm. gentleman in the stadium. Yep. Uh, I don't know if his name was Chief Scalpum or not. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sir Richard Rose. I don't know. I mean, combat tribes is the best I've got, but I mean, who were the bosses in Sunset Riders? Oh shit, dude! I do not remember. He's kind of doing a. Uh, a greatest hits thing so far. Like he's naming, oh, except for Kendo except Rage. Except for Kendo Rage, yeah. yeah. Presumably. I need to play it. I need to get that speed run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could be. I mean, it could be Sunset Riders. Yeah, because I mean. I think it's more likely Sunset Riders than it is um, Kama Tribes. Yeah. Just because I don't remember, like, Sir Richard Rose, I don't remember anyone being, like, nobility or anything or a knight. Yeah. I remember the the Aryan Nazi cyborg at the end, and then the <laughs> woman, that the, the female cyborg, who just yep. fucking wrecks your shit nonstop. Yep. Hawkeye Hank cyborgs Hatfield. Cyborgs ain't ladies. Dude, <laughs> cyborgs ain't ladies. You're, but Hawk, Hawkeye Hank Hatfield, totally cowboy Sounds name. Like something, yeah. Chief Scalpum and Sir Richard Rose. I, Sunset Riders. Sunset I like Riders. this. Do it. Okay. Do it. Sunset Riders. Locking it in. It is Sunset Riders. All right. Well done, Good Tyler. Right. Well done. Next question. This game, named after a popular Italian sports car manufacturer, is essentially an upgrade from Titus's previous entry in the Crazy Cars franchise, Crazy Cars 3. It adds a two-player mode, a few more options, and a jazz fusion soundtrack. It's be like Ferrari. Ferrari or Fiat. Lamborghini. Is that Italian? I don't really honestly know. Sounds like, Sounds it, like it is, but... I think I have a feeling this is the first one that we are going to miss. Yeah. But if we can guess the correct car, half credit. Half credit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Read through it one more time. Okay. This game, named after a popular Italian sports car manufacturer, is essentially an upgrade from Titus's previous entry in the Crazy Cars franchise, Crazy Cars 3. It adds a two-player mode, a few more options, and a jazz fusion soundtrack. Lamborghini driving challenge. I, I bet it's Ferrari. You think it's Ferrari? I do think. For some reason, I think it's Ferrari. <coughs> Ferrari? Yeah. yeah. Ferrari, I, and then we do it. I don't know what the, what the title is. Ferrari the F1 challenge. Or... Ferrari F1 challenge. Locking it in. It is Lamborghini Shit. American challenge. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. You had, you you had said it. it. We, we had partial credit. We had that. challenge in it. I definitely didn't say American. I didn't expect that at all. Mm -mm. It's a Lambo, baby. It's the bit. That's, <laughs> it's a Lambo. <laughs> they talk about it in songs all the time. Uh, next question. In this game, named after an American city and a diamond slash movie franchise, the player is shrunk down and moves around a house used as a hub level. In this game, named after an American city and a diamond slash movie franchise, the player shrunk down and moves around a house, uses a hub level. American city? Where a character is shrunk down? Honey, I shrunk the Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> what was the diamond thing? I don't know. A diamond slash movie franchise. What's a diamond franchise? K's? Hayes, De Beers, De Beers, De Beers? Michelson's. <laughs> it's probably Michelson's. Is that an American city? 
Michelson's, Michelson, Kansas. Michelson, <laughs> Colorado. No. Ugh. All right, American cities. There's New York. <laughs> there's Los Angeles. And everything in between. San Francisco, San Diego. What? Do you shrink down and use a house as a hub world? I don't. The, I feel like I could get it with the diamond thing, but I don't know. It's still, I'll let you. I'll let you read it and like with your own eyes in case I'm misreading it. Movie. Movie slash. It says mo- diamond, diamond slash, slash movie, movie franchise. franchise. Okay, so what? All right, so what is the Venn diagram of movie names, diamond, diamond franchises, franchises and movie franchises? I don't. And American cities. There's a there's three circles, and wherever they overlap is this game: American cities, diamond franchise, movie franchise, or are the movies about diamonds. It's like a heist movie. Or Alvin something. and the Chipmunks, Diamond Girls. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> cash, cash and diamonds. I got nothing. I don't have any idea what that is. It's almost too many details. It confuses me. It's named after an American city. Las Vegas. Vegas Stakes. Vegas Stakes. But you don't get shrunk down and you don't get use shrunk a house down. As a hub. You use the hotel room as a hub, though. Because like, from, isn't that right? Wasn't that Vegas Stakes where you're in the apart where you're in you? Because it starts out Take with you driving and then partner. you, and then you get the hotel room, but that is certainly not. You're not shrunk down. I do not remember being shrunk down mm. in Vegas Stakes. Well, then Caesar's Palace also. I haven't played Caesar's Palace, but that's not a city. Yeah, the only thing right. I was thinking of was Vegas is because it's right there yeah. in the. Vegas stakes. Is, You're right. I don't know where that ties into a diamond slash movie franchise, but me neither. I'm just curious to know now what it is. No escape. No <laughs> escape. Featuring Ray Liotta. I I got these diamonds. <laughs> Go buy them. Man, I love you guys. Raise rocks. <laughs> I love you guys. I super do not want to give up on this one because I okay. kn- I know it's okay. bad podcasting, but I no, feel like fine. we can fucking. It's fine. I feel like we can fucking get this one, unless the question's just broken. Diamond slash movie franchise is what it's American City, Dallas. Did they make a Dallas video game Dallas where you get shrunk? Club. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where you buy diamonds in a small house. <laughs> shrunk the kids. I know. I keep going back to Honey. I shrunk yeah. the kids. And I go back to that stage in Little Nemo where you're in Nemo's house. Yep. You're shrunk down. I was like, Mario Six Golden Coins? No. <laughs> it's named after an American city. Boston. Did the band Boston have a video game where you get shrunk down <laughs> and smuggle diamonds? <laughs> What's the fucking movie franchise? This is. I don't know. I feel What's... like we should be able to get this one. That's why it's so. It's bothering me so much. It's got to be something like a three-word title where each what he's oh. saying is each one is a different. Oh. He's just he's throwing, trying to throw us off. Okay, so St. Louis De Beers Avengers. <laughs> 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 fuck God, fuck! <laughs> I can't do this, man. It's killing me. Oregon Trail. Wait, God. wait. Oh, is there like a? Is there like a? Is there like a Disney like Orlando thing? Like, is that I don't know where diamonds come in, but you could, might be able to get shrunk down in something like that. <laughs> like an Ep- there's like an Epcot Adventure thing, isn't there? But it's it. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, That's not a city. It's though. not a city, but maybe Orlando's in the title, and I just don't realize it. Orlando's best. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a seafood restaurant. He did, and he did say <laughs> it was an American city. He, he, it says, in this game, named after an American city and a diamond slash movie franchise. It's like, what like a crazy ass Venn diagram is this? Uh, the player is shrunk down and moves around the house, uses a hub level. Movie franchise. So it's not just even one movie. It's a fucking franchise. I feel like, oh. All right, Super Nintendo. Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia 2. AIDS is back. <laughs> and you shrink down and go inside Tom Hanks and kill all the AIDS inside of him. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's like Rex Ronan. Rex Ronan. Yeah. Well, you're killing the final Tom Hanks answer. Hanks. Rex Ronan. Tom Hanks's experimental <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> There's okay. So let me rule this out. There's absolutely no way this is a sports game, right? Because when I think of city, American cities, I think of like you know, weirdly, I think of like sports games. Like it features, I don't know, the the fucking Steelers or some shit. And yeah. They put the name of the city in there. Pittsburgh presents. <sighs> Fuck man, we're not gonna get this. No, <laughs> no we're not. Uh, you want to take a guess? Or you ready to just throw in the towel? He might just be saying like it's not featured in the city it could be like phoenix because phoenix is an american city but it's oh it's not actually it's not it based shares on a city. name with the city not yes. named after the city yep. which he definitely says in this question so if it's not literally named after wow. the city we get it right <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's a good you mm. i mean yeah something that coincidentally is named mm-hmm. the same as a city like phoenix mm-hmm Phoenix's Diamond Cave. Jesus Christ. Is there like a strategy game or anything that takes place like a famous battle? Uh, Gettysburg Gettysburg or some shit? But you would get shrunk down? Tiny Civil War? (laughs) This question is broken. This question is broken. It's like a Rob Schneider movie. Uh, Yeah, I give up just because I want to know. Yeah, all right. I just want to know. God damn it. All right, I'm with you. All right, here we go. Oh, my wife has food for us. Hello. Okay. Oh, my God. You have a lot of food for Pizza, us. Pizza, chips, a lot. cookies, and napkins. You set it on the chair? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, my wonderful, gorgeous wife. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Can you tell you... us about the time that you were in middle school and invited to drink two kegs at the church youth group? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a? I can turn the mic on. Do you have a comment about that? Because that sounds weird <laughs> AF. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> Confirmed. The preacher is dead now. The preacher is dead. Died of cancer. Yeah, it's Tyler mentioned that too. Insane. Um, Probably from all the beer. Probably from all the beer. <laughs> but yeah, she had to go. Can you hear me? Uh, no, we can't hear you. The, Did she tell you that part? She. What happened? You had, she had to go up in front of the church and confess her sins yes. to the congregation. I did not know she had to go <laughs> in front of the that. church. Yeah. I, I, I phased. I, yeah, totally zoned out on that. Yeah. I was too. Invo- I was too involved in making a joke about te- teens. So we were talking about off. Mean Girls, where Amy Poehler's character, the mom, wants you know okay. everyone to drink yeah, at home. She was absolutely that, that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with with a preacher husband. <laughs> Thank you for enlightening, shedding some light on that. I wanted to, it sounded so unreal that I needed to confirm with another human that that it happened. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's bad. If I eat now, I won't be able to, I won't be able to eat at home. So I've already got, yeah. This is my life. I'm going to have some, I'm going to, I wish I could, but yeah, I can't go home and be like, remember how I said we'd eat when I got home? (laughs) I lied. (laughs) And had a lot of, Good fucking awesome smelling pizza. All right. So where were we? Yeah, whatever whatever it is. I have no idea. All right. Uh, we give up. It is Pink Goes to Hollywood. Never. I never would have. That is a that. Pink Panther I guess, game. I guess and pink is a kind of diamond. Yeah. And I don't it, know if I would the call pink it a Panther franchise. It's a movie franchise. There's several Pink no, Panther the movies. No, Diamond franchise. I don't. Diamond slash movie oh. franchise. So it's... A, Okay. Because it made it sound like diamond franchise, like a series of diamond swords as opposed to just a type of diamond. Pink goes to Hollywood. I, that was... That was... that was a, It's fine now. It was fine now. Yeah, I understand it, it yeah. now. But that was... I, I, I get where he was going for that. I do feel like that's some creative question writing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. There's And there's no way. It, we still, hope, we we still hope you get milk, Ross. Please get milk. Next question. This Disney game was developed by Shinji Mikami, more famous for his PS1 survival horror series, Resident Evil. Clock Tower? Clock Tower is the best I got. Yeah, I have no idea. I would just guess Clock Tower then. Clock Tower, locking it in. It is Disney's Aladdin. He said Disney game, right? Clock Tower is on a Disney game. He did say Disney game. He did. I just flew over my head. Yep, me too. Uh, Same. So... (laughs) Everyone remembers Disney's famous <laughs> film, Clock Tower. 
<laughs> with the with that little warp twisted character with giant scissors. <laughs> Next question. Cinderella, Cinderella. <laughs> Use the scissors on your belly. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm twisted. Next question. This game takes two very different side scrolling beat 'em up series and smashes them together into an inedible paste. Two very different side scrolling beat 'em up series. Battle Toads and Double oh, Dragon. Oh, you got it. That has to be it. Locking it in. It is. Come on. Come on. Why isn't it working? Uh, it's the an- That's the answer, but it will not. He forgot to put it in. It will not He's go. He assumed we'd get it. No, there it is. Finally, my phone. Battletoads, Double Dragon. Nice. Well done, Tyler. Well done. <laughs> Next question. This game, uh, this game, known as Darius Force, everywhere but North America, allows you to play as one of three Silver Hawks. I don't know those. I'm Silver familiar Hawks? with Darius. <laughs> Silver Hawks? I like that. <laughs> One of three silver hawks. <laughs> One of thirty-three percent silver hawks. Silver hawks is a thing, right? I don't know. It's like a cartoon or something. Is it? I don't. I have no idea. It seems like it. Maybe I'm just making it up. I'm locking it in, regardless. Yeah, sounds good. Silver hawks, locking it in. It is supernova. Silver hawks, way better name. Never would have gotten a supernova. Mm, yep. We did pretty good on that one. 70%. On that, I think. Yeah. On that quiz. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. good. It's a solid C. Yeah. Next question. Fuck, Mary kill. I love this one. Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman. Fly Baxter Stockman or pre fly Baxter Stockman? He doesn't say, he doesn't specify, but I, I think it's safe to assume fly Baxter yeah. Stockman. I'm going to say, out of the three of those, he's the only sub, so I'm probably going to either fuck or marry him. I'm not killing him. Um, He could could build you some cool, a cool smart house if you marry Baxter Stockman. That is true. Mm. And I do like the Mousers. Mm. Uh, I I think you could have an army of Mousers. So I'll marry Baxter Stockman. Get on that sub energy. Mm -hmm. Have an army of Mousers. Never have to worry about fucking rats in my house ever. Never, ever. Um, I like... I like Rocksteady better than Bebop, so I'm going to kill Bebop. I've always liked Rocksteady's design better, mm. so uh, I guess I'm going to fuck Rocksteady. You know he brings that mm. big dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll say the same. That sounds, that sounds good. Me too. All right. We're all going to live together in Baxter Stockman's <laughs> <laughs> weird house. <laughs> the housewives of Baxter Stockman. Uh, next question. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to do this one. Daisy Duke, Elaine Bennis, Diane Chambers. I'm gonna kill Diane. Man, but Diane's so fucking hot. <laughs> I get it, but Diane's so fucking hot. I'm gonna really? fuck. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna fuck Diane. Um, what's the first one again? Daisy Duke. Daisy Duke. Who I really honestly don't know that much about because I never watched The Duke of Hazards. I know more about Jessica Simpson, Daisy Duke. Well, than I, know, I, do. I know more about Daisy Duke than I do about. Um, it'd be so hard to be married to Elaine, Elaine. though. So yeah, I, it'd be really rough to be married. To I'd Elaine. have to kill her, I think, and then I would, I would probably fuck Diane and marry Daisy. Is okay. So I didn't watch a lot of Dukes of Hazard. Is because like I think you could, I think an argument could be made that Elaine and Diane are shitty people. Yep. Is Daisy Duke a shitty person? No, no, she's I'd, just I'd not. marry. I'd marry Daisy. She's just she's southern. Sweet. <laughs> right. She's sweet. She's yeah. very sweet. Well, then it sounds like that is the call. Je- to Jessica marry her. Simpson or OG? Well, I'm thinking OG. <laughs> yeah, but she's also sweet. Jessica Simpson, Daisy Duke. If it's Jessica sweet. Simpson, I'm at least fucking. Yeah. No, I say um, you marry Daisy Duke. She's the only one who's a good person who would but be I'm good going, to marry. Yeah. I'm going Catherine Bach, original Daisy Duke. Damn, you know the name and everything. I'm Shit, glad yeah, you're I here. I watch that show yeah. every week. Yeah. I love that show. Um, but Elaine, even if you fuck Elaine, you know she's going to be talking shit about you the whole rest of her life. Oh, yeah. To all of her friends. It's true. As much as I like Seinfeld, yeah, I guess. And I mean, it's tough because... It, but Diane is sure I'm just going to try to wreck your wreck your life and break your heart. Like She does not give a shit. Well, I'm, def- I'm not marrying her. I'm fucking her. I don't care. Right. Yeah, I guess I'd have to. Yeah, I guess I'd have to kill Elaine and fuck Diane. 
Maybe then I'm an Eskimo Brothers with Frazier, and then it's all Hey, right. there you go. <laughs> there you go. There's a little bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The Simpsons Arcade, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade, the X-Men Arcade Games. Mary fuck, kill. Uh, this is... The Mary part is very easy for me, and now I'm going to marry the Simpsons Arcade. I want to. Um, yeah, me too. Because I love the first 11 seasons of The Simpsons and also that arcade game. And also I had that fucking DOS port mm -hmm. uh, of the arcade, Simpsons arcade as a kid. And I played that shit all the time. Definitely marrying the Simpsons arcade. Yep. I'm with you. Um, and then it gets tough. <laughs> Which one do I kill? TMNT or X Men? I think I, I think I'm killing X Men. I'm killing. I think I am too. too. It gets TMNT's it gets old the quickest. Game. It does. But let me throw this in here. It's six player. It does have. That's like the big thing it has. And double like it. That's it's got dual monitors. Technically, like from a technical standpoint, X Men I feel like is a better is a better arcade game. Is it as well designed? I don't think so personally, but. I feel like there's just way more. Re I like the turtles better than the X Men. Yeah, there I said it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the main, my main reasoning with fucking the turtles. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say fuck turtles and, and then and kill the, the X Men. Men. They have yeah. a great big giant um, teenage mutant ninja turtles game at the Atomic City. Um, is it the new one? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I've played that it's one fun. in it Nashville. It is, it is so fun. Huge yeah, and yeah, I, like. Beautiful high resolution. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. cool game, and it has like the same kind of like feel from the old beat 'em ups. I yeah. felt like mm -hmm. too. Oh, twenty twenty two. By the way, for Shredder's Revenge. Yeah, I it's saw the that. rumor. I don't know if they're going to stick to that. Yeah, I, apparently April O'Neil's a, a playable, playable character. character. Yeah, it looks neat. Yeah, it does look neat, and I do hope that we get more character reveals as yeah. a, as you know between now and twenty twenty two. Yep. That's it. That's it for the quiz. Ross, thank you. Thank you, Ross. Indeed. Appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, and in retrospect, your your Pink Panther game, the question is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Is pink a diamond brand? No, but it's, it's a just, color it's a type of diamond. diamond. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, well, let's talk about what we're going to do next week. Yeah, you want to do it? Do you want to pray to the randomizer? Let's pray to the randomizer. To choose a game ahead. from the list that's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Super bring, bring it back out. Bring okay. it back out. Go get the better up peripheral, plug it in, put my head on one end, this the other end, and while I'm crazy kid style, say the prayer we all love to say. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. 48. Again, this is pulled from the list of SNES games that are on the Switch yep. online library. Yep. 48. Brawl Brothers. I might as well be. It's tough. Tough enough. Tough enough. It is tough enough. Okay. That's like the second one in the series, I think. Uh, I don't know. Is it Brawl Brothers, Tough Enough, and then... Peacekeepers, Peacekeepers? is the last one. I know yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I think That sounds right. Tough Enough is probably the second one. Okay. Yeah. Tough Enough. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, Tabog.com. Just, milkross.com milkross.com uh yeah just put that bog into, into google you'll find us we're, we're there we're there um do you have something you want to send us we got we got plans we got stuff going on or you want to send us something for an intro do it tap I, studios i do have a package that i totally forgot to bring uh, i'll bring it next time okay, that's good Tab Box Studios, care of Nicole Dance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. We're taking on calls, so give us a call, 270-883-2555. We're on Instagram and Twitter, tapbog underscore podcast. We're on Facebook for now. Who knows? Facebook is always a weird fucking shitty algorithm platform. So uh, Tadpog, Tadpog Nation, and then we got that Discord for the good shit. Yeah, that's bit.ly slash Tadpog Discord. Uh, you want a shirt? Shirts.tapog.com. Get a mask. Come on. Even if it's not ours, get a mask. Just get one. Yeah, just wear get it. One. Just get one. It doesn't have to be ours. But if you want one for us, mask.tapog.com. Or is it just look on Redbubble? It's all there. Uh, Dave, you got that Twitch? I do. I stream on Twitch on Sunday nights. Uh, Twitch.tv slash tadpog underscore podcast. Um, we have a good time. 
I usually stream the game that we're going to be talking about. Obviously, I didn't for Mean Girls because I do not have <laughs> oh, the man. only existing ROM copy right. of it. Um, but I streamed Princess Tomato last time. And I do plan on doing a bonus stream coming up to finish that game. So, yeah. Come on. I was going to check out some of that. It looks it looks very interesting. It, it's pretty, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. But it's all because it's, you just want to see what vegetable they show you as a human next, essentially. <laughs> So I had seen uh, people on Disco talk about the resurrection of the Penny Train. Oh, yeah. So I see uh, Penny Train's back. Uh, so thank you, Chris Murray, joining that Penny Train. Toot, toot. See, there any spiders in that church. Oh, God, in that I don't want to blow in this. <laughs> Remember the breadstick, Dave. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Toot, toot. I'm not going to do it. I'm not putting my mouth on that. You're right. I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Uh, new pledge, new considerable pledge, Daniel Jones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. Uh, a big up from Backlog Banisher Dane. Thank you, Backlog much appreciated. Banisher Dane. And thanks for putting all the stuff yeah. on YouTube. Hell yes. That's all we got for pa- Patreon. Uh, we have some executive producers. Uh, these are the folks who donate on our Patreon at $20 or more a month. Uh, and I'd like to thank them currently. Once I pull up Google Docs, because believe it or not, there are a lot of them, amazingly. Believe and I it don't, or not, I don't I'm not home. <laughs> <laughs> We've got God Emperor Alex Pena, Cathusius Jeff Miners, Laud Mullaney Dennis, Steve Dixon, Plinko Nick Price, Clambro Cody Phillips, Bantha Master, Executive Producer Dig Dougie, The Eight Fold Daniel Abernathy, Time Lord Josh Edwards, Game Bug Prime Nathan Eaton, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G, congratulations on your marriage. Magical Sleeper, a.k.a. Big Dicked Pie Baker, Chris Vaughn. Usurper Grimm, uh, Temporary Eternal Savior Cubicle Monkey. Man, that's <laughs> hard for me. Every time I want to be temporal. Uh, Pinball Archmage, Chris Edler, I'm sorry you couldn't be on this episode. Platinum Member, Brett Miller. Sandwich Pope, Phil Hawkins. Nate from Utah, First Time Caller. Zeus Laser, Boons from Brooklyn. Drinksmith, Joey Webster. Big Daddy, Paul Anderson. Edgelord, Kyle Pertlebaugh. Master Cycle Baron, Kevin Link. And General Kenobi Massacre. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Hopefully that well, I didn't make notes for this show specifically, so hopefully that's not outdated. If it is, I'm sorry. I'll make sure it's right next yeah, episode. I think we're good. Well, our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. Link to that track can be found. Tadpock.com. How you guys wanna close it out? Your favorite mean girl. Your right? favorite mean girl? Yeah. Okay. I can't remember all their names, but okay. So until next time tropical Tropical Capricorn Capricorn. tropical Capricorn happen it's not gonna happen (laughs) it's so fetch Uh, we each chose a different mean girl (laughs) that means that when we meet our Lindsay Lohan the circle will be complete it's John Turley God (laughs) man it's gotta be John And now, a dramatic reading by Tyler Holland. Believe it or not, (laughs) George isn't at home. Please. That was the most pregnant pause we've ever had on the show. (laughs) Is it going to go George or not? (laughs) Leave a message after the beep. I must be out or I'd pick up the phone. Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home. (laughs) Yay. I love that. That was very good. Thank you. Now do a high school stripper dance to it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's weird that that scene in Mean Girls hit me totally different watching it as a 39-year-old than it did when I first saw this movie, because I was watching it last night, and it was like, oh, oh shit, that... I can't weird. be watching this. <laughs> What's weird to me is that when I saw the movie the first time, which it was after 2004, because that's when that movie came out, that didn't strike me as very odd. <laughs> but like, That was pretty good, why not? <laughs> last night it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I swear I don't have two kegs in my house. <laughs> <laughs>